Welcome back to another edition of Prep Preview on CISN. Powered by Fairway, I'm Trent Condon. Well, we got a big night of high school football coming your way this evening. The Little Cyclones from Ames will make a visit to Ankeny Centennial to take on the Jaguars. It's Ankeny and West Des Moines Valley in our second matchup and our third out in Waukee as the Warriors play host to the Johnston Dragons. Should be three good ones here for you on the air on CISN. You can find all those games. Just search CISN on YouTube and all the game casts will pop up here for you this evening. Before we take a look at the games this week, let's take a look back at what we saw a week ago and maybe the best team in the state, maybe the best team in Southeast Polk program history was on the field Friday night as they dispatch the Valley Tigers. Incredibly impressive performance from the Rams. Number one in the rankings. You wondered how they were going to respond after they ascended to that top spot. They were ready to go from the opening gun and dominated the Tigers in a big 34 2-7 victory. They did it on both sides of the football. Defense was suffoca suffocating, making incredibly difficult for Valley to do much of anything offensively. Outside of a big swing pass out to Jaden Williams, they did what they wanted up front, really controlled the Valley offensive line, and that defense played at a high, high level. But you continue to see it also on the offensive side from Southeast Polk. An offensive line that averages 280 pounds across a young sophomore in Caden Proctor who has offers all across the country. He's a big time prospect. Their quarterback Jackson Daly made in the controls. They can run the football. They can do it with a myriad of different running backs. Titus Christensen. They put Xavier Nawanka in there at times. This is a high, high level team. Emmanuel out at the wide receiver position. Really all facets of the game appear to be incredibly high for Southeast Polk. I mentioned Xavier Nawamka. And how about the hit that he laid against Cale Nesheim? One of the biggest hits. He was called for targeting on that play and ejected for the game. Southeast Polk without a game this week. Their next matchup will be against Atumwa, and they'll be without the services of Nwanka because of that ejection. Look clean. You can see the highlight at CISN. We have it there. I'll tell you one thing, though. He is a high-level prospect. You can see why Oklahoma and Notre Dame and Ohio State and here locally Iowa and Iowa State they want the services of him. He's still got another football uh, season in front of him, though. Just a junior, Xavier Nwapka from Southeast Polk. Tough one for Valley on their side of things, certainly, but they look to bounce back this week as they'll take on Ankeny. We'll get into that game a little bit later on. Waukee and Dowling Catholic. This is a game wasn't surprising about the result. It was surprising the way the game played out. And You look at the numbers of this one, certainly higher scoring. I think that anybody can be anticipated walking into that one. But when you look at this Dowling Catholic team, you knew they were going to be good defensively. The questions remain on the offensive side of the football. They answered a whole lot about that, with what they did against Waukee, come roaring back and get that victory. Still two good teams, and I think two teams that have a chance to make a run to get back to the Unidome again this season. We saw them a few years back face off for a uh, spot in the championship game. Very well could see that again this season, depending on the way the bracket plays out. Those are just a couple of the big games that we saw a week ago. Lots of good ones and we got more good ones come your way again this week. Also big news on the front of ineligibility as we sit here and get ready for the games tonight. Jake Rubley, the transfer quarterback from Colorado, four star who's committed and signed to play at Kansas State. His season has come to a close according to the association. They are going to go out there and ask for a reverse of that decision. How long that process takes, though, overseeing it, as it's happened with Arlen Bruce from Ankeny, another young prospect from Clear Creek, Amanda, that transferred in from, from Illinois. He was told that he is now ineligible. A lot of frustration on all sides. There's frustration starting with the kids. The young men that came to the state of Iowa just looking for an opportunity to play their senior season of football. There's also frustration from these schools, from Valley, that finds out on Wednesday your quarterback is ineligible after being able to be eligible the first four weeks. Nothing has changed in the circumstances for Jake Rubley. There hasn't been a change, but the association says more information is now eligible. For Arlen Bruce, who's getting ready to play his first game in week one against Crosstown rival Centennial, finds out the day of the game he's not able to play, and they continue down the process there. And maybe the most frustrating one is the young man, though, from Clear Creek, Amana. This is a guy, you talk about Rubley committed to Kansas State. He's going to play Big 12 football. Arlen Bruce, he's committed to play at Iowa. He's going to the Big Ten. 
This young man, though, from Clear Creek, Amana, has a couple of FCS offers, has an opportunity to play at Southern Illinois, a Northern Illinois offer in the MAC. But this is a young man trying to play and get that Big Ten, Big 12, a Power 5 scholarship offer. And now that's been taken away four games into his senior season. Those are the ones you certainly feel for, and there's a possibility of more of them coming. What is the association looking for? What do they want? What do they want from these young men that came here to play football? That's what we're still trying to find out. You ask Chris Cuellar, the communication director, you go to Tom Keating and ask for answers, and they say, we don't talk about eligibility issues. That's where we are, and that's where the frustration lies all over the place. Big story certainly here tonight, but we got games, and we'll get into those games. When we come back, it's Prep Preview on CISN, powered by Fairway. We're back with more in a moment. Focus, to define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor, and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. At MidAmerican Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. We support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades, all to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Business owners, real estate agents, are you looking for an experienced, proven, and locally owned partner in central Iowa for your commercial construction needs? Make it Roshan Corporation. Roshan Corporation will guide you through options to make your dreams a reality. Roshan, your general contractor who can build anything from small tenant improvement spaces to large-scale design-build projects. It's Roshan Corporation. Online at RoshanIA.com. If you can dream it, we can build it. You can buy a new Ford at any Ford dealer. Why Schott & Kirk Ford? Our core values. Hard work, trust, character, integrity, honesty, and respect. During Schott & Kirk Ford's Fall Savings Event, get up to $12,500 off 2020 F-150 XLT. No goofy rebates. Everyone qualifies. Up to $12,000 off 2020 Expedition XLT. New 2020 EcoSport four-wheel drive starting at $18,990. Our certified used vehicles come with a 12-month, 12,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. Hurry in. Schott & Kirk Ford, Indianola. SchottenKirkFord.com. We're back with you here on Prep Preview CISN, powered by Fairway. It's time for our conversation with the coaches. Let's hear from Johnston head coach Woodley as he had a chance to talk with Dar Danielson. Joining us now is Johnston head coach Brian Woodley, and uh, thanks for joining us, coach. You uh, got started out with a loss, but you guys have uh, got things together, got three straight wins heading into this ball game, and. Uh, What's it been? Just continued improvement for you that's that's allowed you to put together this win streak? Yeah, a lot of hard work. You know, our kids have been putting a lot of time and effort and on and off the field in to prepare, you know, throughout the offseason. Then you go into week one, and we didn't play as well as we'd like, but, you know, Urban Hill had something to do with that. We didn't uh, protect our pump protection very well, which I thought was very key to give an Urban Hill a 13 points advantage. And then defensively, we gave up some – crucial third down plays that kind of give him some big plays to made it hard for us to come back and win that game. But hats off to Urbandale, but it was a way for us here at Johnson to look, take a look in the mirror and come back to work and roll our sleeves up. And we played, you know, some pretty good football for three weeks, but we've yet to play a perfect game in all three areas, which is a good thing heading into week five. Yeah, and the schedule doesn't get any uh, easier for you coming through on that. But uh, uh, your quarterback, he's been playing well, and he's he does a little bit of everything for you. Has that kind of been one of the drivers, too, in leadership for that? Yeah, you know, Jack Rutz, you know, a junior. Uh, last year as a sophomore, him and Noah Stortz were both sophomores and played, you know, off and on for us off without injury. I mean, excuse me, with injuries. Um, so at the end of the day, we I'm proud of what Jack's done. He's put in a lot of time to get better. So he's helping us in the passing game, the running game, 
I think pretty good. Talked about it. Uh, good teams, this Waukee team, they're explosive, a lot of big plays. Um, give us, give me your assessment of them on how you're going to match up with them. Well, I tell you what, they are pretty darn talented, Waukee. You know, it starts with uh, Smith. I'm, number five is the key to them. I mean, he can do everything. He makes a lot of big plays. Last year, he scored four touchdowns, and he did it in every aspect of the game, receiving, running, pick six, kick return. This year, he did four touchdowns last week against uh, West Des Moines Dowling or Dowling Catholic. And uh, we know that he's a big part of what they do, and we got to know where he's at. And we're going to try to do everything in our power to limit how many times he touches the ball. But uh, he's he's kind of the face. But they've got a bunch of good players at Waukee. And, you know, it's going to be a challenge for us on both sides of the ball uh, to win this football game. But if we can, you know, keep away from the, the uh, explosive plays, uh, and then we got to score some points offensively. I think we have a really good chance to win. Yeah, this has become a good purple on purple rivalry, hasn't it, between you two guys? Uh, yeah, it's, you know, they've had the better part of us. I mean, a few years ago, we beat them out there, but, the, you know, last two years, they kind of hit our number again. So we would like nothing more than to return the favor and uh, go out there and get a win against a very good football team. Probably one of the best two and two teams in the state of Iowa. Non-COVID-wise, health, uh, how you doing as far as injuries and everything like that? You know, it's the middle of the year. Here you are, week five, yeah. and, you know, playing three or four. Of the, I mean, the teams we played to this point in Waukee can say the same thing. They played a brutal schedule. You know, we got a bunch of sore guys um, as far as being hurt, injured. You know, we have a few injuries that could hurt us. Uh, Noah Stortz, uh, still kind of game time decision for us. He kind of got hurt in the Centennial game, our starting DN, who's had a great year. Uh, we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow to exactly see how that knee feels. It uh, hasn't practiced all week. And uh, other than that, we do return a starting offensive lineman that was gone on COVID. He's missed the last two weeks, Gabe Christofferson. Uh, Will Lucas is a kicker. It gives us some more depth in the kicking game was gone due to COVID. Uh, but other than that, we're just sore, you know, like everybody else. Can't feel sorry for ourselves. We're just excited that we're still playing. Right. I was just just saying, this year you're playing, you're getting out on the field, and uh, it sounds like beautiful weather and everything. So it should be yep. a, a good game. We appreciate your time, Coach. Thanks a lot, and good luck to you on Friday night. All right. Thanks for having me. That's Coach Brian Woodley of Johnston on TISN.TV. Focus. To define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor, and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. If you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise, there's a lawyer right here in Central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Nigget, a Brick Gentry Law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at rushonbusiness.com. Let Rush Nigget help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Nigget, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. In Iowa, we grow corn, but to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. We're back with you on Prep Preview CISN. I'm Trent Condon as we get ready for our conversation with the coaches powered by Fairway. Let's hear from the head man for the Waukee Warriors, Scott Carlson, talking with Dar Danielson. Joining us now is uh, Waukee head coach Scott Carlson. And coach, well, a, a big game last week and came down to a couple plays at the end and, and a close finish there. But uh, what did you think of the overall effort of the team? 
Well, I don't fault, fault the effort at all, Dar. It was, uh, you know, from both sides of the ball, special teams. I mean, everybody contributed to having an opportunity to be successful. And I guess everybody also contributed to maybe, you know, coming up one place short in, in a couple of phases. And so those are the kinds of things that will cost you uh, against really good football teams like Dowling. And unfortunately, we were on the short end of the score when it was all said and done. Some, some good things, some big plays. Aaron Smith had a whale of a night there, uh, scoring in a lot of different ways. And uh, you like to see those explosive plays, don't you? Oh, definitely. And, and that's one thing that, you know, if you go into a game and, and you feel like you can have that many explosive plays against a team like Dowling, then you feel like, well, this, this, you're going to have an opportunity in the end. And I think that's kind of what it came down to is, uh, in the end, we did have opportunities and, and we let a couple of them go by the wayside. And, we, we knew this coming into the, the schedule we were going to have this year, that there were going to be a lot of close games. And uh, there's absolutely been a lot of close games virtually every single weekend uh, we've had to battle. And, uh, and, and I think, you know, we, we learned lessons from that. And it, at the same time, it takes a little bit of a mental and physical toll on your guys. And so you got to try to make sure you keep things in perspective because, uh, you know, you want to get better every week and you want to keep making sure that everybody understands that you know you're in a pretty decent place when when you take all of that into account. Yeah, how do you? Because you know you can get into that mode where you're worried that every play you know might might cause a you know, loss or might. And how do you just keep them loose and keep them you know playing and knowing that hey, you know we just got to go out there and put it all out on the field. That's really <laughs> the and you, you try to develop and encourage you know the things that you try to hang your hat on over the course of the year. You know toughness, discipline, all of those things matter when it's you know when the chips are on the table and, and somebody has to step up and make a play and and again I, I give our guys a lot of credit because you know that was a, a roller coaster game to be sure you know we were uh you know in control by by a couple of scores at one point we were down by a couple of scores late in the game and uh, battled back in the end and and as I said unfortunately you know one one player too short but I think the guys by now kind of get a sense of this isn't one of those seasons where you're ever going to have the chance to just be mediocre in any, uh, you know, in any game, let alone in any one play. And and you have to be resilient and, and let, you know, a bad play go and, and play on. And I think that's another thing that, you know, really gets, uh, you know, under a microscope uh, given, given the situation we have this year. And, and that's in the long run, I think that's going to pay dividends for this team. Yeah, and then you look at this week's game. You got a team coming in red hot, <laughs> Johnston. They lost right. their first game, but they've been playing well, and they got strung some wins together here. And uh, so, what do you see out of them that uh, you'll have to, to work hard on? Well, I, I think unfairly, you know, I don't think many people were giving this team a lot of credit, you know, at the beginning of the season. And I think again, you looked at schedules and you looked at your perennial, you know, powers that that people think of. And Johnston on paper didn't have a lot of kids returning. Uh, but to the, the credit of, uh, you know, Coach Woodley and his staff, I think they, they've got these guys believing in the right things and, and playing hard. And uh, as we saw just a couple of weeks ago, you know, what a tremendous win for them against that same Dowling team uh, where they had to really come up in the end and, and perform and make a couple of big plays. And that's exactly what they did. And so I think they're really, you know, sky high right now, as you mentioned, uh, playing with a ton of confidence. And I know they're going to be coming in here uh, and we're going to get, just like everybody else this year, we're going to get their best shot. And, and hopefully we're going to be able to give them our best shot as well. And I think it's going to be another heck of a ball game. Their quarterback, he's really uh, taking control of this team and he's, he does everything. He punts, he <laughs> plays quarterback a little bit, everything. Uh, so is he's probably the guy you got to look at on defense, isn't he? No question. And he is, uh, you know, really came on even as a sophomore last year and we had our eye on him certainly. And, you know, I think physically he's matured, you know, a little bit bigger, stronger this year. Certainly mentally going through the gauntlet last year of the tough games, he had to grow up and, and really uh, learn to perform in, in adversarial conditions there as well. So a lot of, you know, great games under his belt, a lot of seasoning this year. And now again, a lot of confidence uh, that they can get the job done. So he's certainly a threat. And, and you said exactly, you know, one of the things we've been talking about on special teams this week, Anytime the quarterback's the punter, yeah. that, that gives you a little bit of extra concern as well, certainly because you know that he's back there and he's very capable of making big plays. 
All right. Well, we're playing football again. So looks like might be pretty good weather, fall, September weather, like you like for football, and you can't ask for anything more than that, can you? No, nice and warm and, and really summer-like, and that's the thing, I think, for all the teams around the state. You know, this time of year, you get the highs and lows of the temperatures as well, and you really have to prepare yourself to, to stay hydrated because these can kind of sneak up on you if you're not careful and can create problems for the guys. So uh, should be a great night to play ball. Uh, this, this time of the year, you know, you're playing in fall, summer kind of conditions, and I think for – for the players, it'll be great. Obviously, for the fans who can attend, it'll be great. And hopefully, for everybody watching uh, on their on their computers and TVs, it'll be a, a fun game to watch as well. All right. Again, we appreciate you joining us here, Coach. Get a preview of the game, and uh, good luck. Thank you very much, Star. It's Coach Scott, Coach Scott Carlson. I can talk this here. And that's going to wrap it up on CISN.TV. Focus to define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor, and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. If you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise, there's a lawyer right here in Central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Nigget, a Brick Gentry Law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at rushonbusiness.com. Let Rush Nigget help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Nigget, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedoctordesmoines.com. Business owners, real estate agents, are you looking for an experienced, proven, and locally owned partner in Central Iowa for your commercial construction needs? Make it Roshan Corporation. Roshan Corporation will guide you through options to make your dreams a reality. Roshan, your general contractor who can build anything from small tenant improvement spaces to large-scale design-build projects. It's Roshan Corporation. Online at RoshanIA.com. If you can dream it, we can build it. It's week five of the Iowa high school football season. Just a couple of weeks to go as we get closer to kickoff here on Prep Preview powered by Fairway. I'm Trent Condon. One final look at the games here this evening. And let's start with the matchup down in Class 3A. It'll be... Dallas Center Grimes as they face off against Norwalk, an old rivalry renewed once again here on a Friday night. Should be a fun one out there. Dallas Center Grimes certainly has their sights set on a state championship in the Class 3A level. They get Norwalk. Warriors off to a little rough start here this season. Lost a couple of tight games early on trying to find their footing defensively. Going to be tough to do against that DCG squad here this evening. Dallas Center Grimes ranked number one or number two, depending on what ranking system you're looking at here tonight. That's one of the matchups we'll be looking at in Class 3A. And 4A, here we got three matchups on CISN tonight. First, the Ames Little Cyclones and a chance to see their fine quarterback, Lipley, who will be out there, put together an incredible performance in Week 1 before that program had to shut down as they were going to an online-only system. Now back to a hybrid model. They'll be back out on the football field, but we hear about his exploits on the basketball floor. He's a top 100 prospect in the junior class. He can do some things also on the football field. Had eight touchdowns in Week 1 against Fort Dodge. He'll go up against the Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. You can see already the improvements, though, for Ankeny Centennial. They've gone young this year. They're playing a lot of sophomores, certainly a lot more than I think you've ever seen a Pizzetti coach team play in the past. Those learning processes, though, are taking a step forward. J.J. Pugh, their quarterback, he's making strides going forward, and we'll see where they are here tonight as they take on the Little Cyclones in Week 5. Over in Waukee tonight, the Johnston Dragons pay a visit. 
We wondered how Johnson was going to respond after the victory against Dowling Catholic a couple of weeks ago. They did it. They got the victory, though it was a tight one. Now the Dragons face off in a step up in competition with Waukee. It's been an interesting season for Waukee. Week one in that game against Southeast Polk. Boy, I wonder what the Warriors had. Then they come back in week two and play at an incredibly high level as they upset Ankeny. Last week against Dowling Catholic, a back-and-forth affair, high-scoring battle there. Tons of talent in this Waukee team. What are they going to have, though, tonight in this matchup? Should be a real good one. Two teams built a little bit differently. Johnston, they're going to have to do it with their defense being stout up there. For Waukee, they want to get out in space. They want to get Aaron Smith the ball from a kick return, get him on the edges, get him on a, sc- on a fly. He has the speed to burn. Going to be a fun matchup there. And then finally, Valley licking their wounds after another loss, this time at the hands of Southeast Polk. They get Ankeny. After Ankeny had those struggles against Waukee in Week 2, they have continued just pulverizing teams. One of the most high-powered offense you're going to see, one of the top signal callers in the state in Jace Bauer. He's got a couple of receivers that are at a high level. Of course, of course Brody Beck, Breck, we talk about him, but also they have a great tight end, Weston Folk. They have a good offensive line and a defense that's played at a high level, too. Going to be a big, big step up for Valley. What do they do with the quarterback situation? No Jake Rubley this week. Their four-star quarterback has been deemed ineligible by excuse me, the Boys Association. They're trying to figure all that out. Going to be some fun ones here tonight, and we'll have the play-by-play for you on CISN with those three games. Also another Central Iowa game. Urbandale still undefeated. They look to slow down a Fort Dodge Dodger team that comes in high power. A big one tonight. It's week five of the Iowa High School Athletic Association. We have it here for you on CISN. This has been Prep Preview powered by Fairway. We'll talk to you again next week. Good evening and welcome to Waukee as we have another high school football game with the rated teams here tonight in Class 4A. Dar Danielson with you on CISN.TV. Number 8, Waukee hosting number 5, Johnston tonight. Johnston at 3-1, and one, Waukee at 2-2. Two and two. And uh, Johnston riding a three-game winning streak after losing their first, their season opener to Urbandale and Waukee. Lost a close one to Dowling last week and looking to bounce back at both these teams. They have a history of uh, meeting each other and having some good games. Waukee's uh, gotten the last couple here, but uh, it's become a little bit of a rivalry of uh, both these teams who are decked out in the purple colors as their home colors. So uh, it should be a good one here tonight. Johnston and Waukee as we're heading down the home stretch in this COVID-19 football season and uh, let's take a break we'll do that we'll come back with more on the pregame show after this on CISN.TV At MidAmerican Energy we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer and ready for the future we support STEM education and community safety, special events and economic development activities we energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades all to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 
15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Tracks or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WalkieChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WalkieChevy.com. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemaker. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. Without question, the COVID-19 pandemic created many disruptive changes in our lives. Some of us got sick, jobs and income were compromised, it was difficult to even spend time with family and friends. But one thing hasn't changed, and that's Westside Auto Pro's commitment to quality service, and that will never change. We're here to make sure you get maximum performance and reliability from your vehicle. So as we all move forward, keep Westside Auto Pros in mind. You've been through enough. We'll make sure your car is the least of your worries. Welcome back to Waukee on CISN.TV. Darty Angelson with you. Joining me, Eric Zamora. And a big match up here tonight between Johnston and Waukee. Johnston, after losing the opener to Urbandale, Eric, they've uh, won three straight and kind of on a little bit of a roll here. But we talked about Waukee's schedule. Johnston has just about as brutal a schedule as Waukee. They've climbed that one hurdle and they beat Dowling. And uh, Waukee lost last week to Dowling by three. So both these teams, uh, we're going to get a good idea here of how they both match up in this ball game here tonight. We certainly are, and uh, you talked about that uh, with uh, head coach Brian Woodley of the Johnson Dragons. And the, the answer to the question of what was the difference out of what week one and two through uh, four was a combination of he felt like his team was playing better, but he also gave a lot of credit to that Urbandale squad. It wasn't simply a, oh, we weren't able to come up with uh, a victory, but a lot of that had to do with what the Jayhawks were bringing. But what he really stressed is that there was a lot of hard work and uh, effort put in not only in what we've seen in the last few weeks out of this Johnson squad, but really in the offseason. And he talked about uh, how uh, his quarterback, Jack Rutz, is he's really proud of him, and he feels like he's just getting exponentially better week after week, game after game. For Waukee, there's got to be a little bit of thought in their head here. The Southeast Polk, that game ended up uh, it, a little as the final. They scored late, so the score looked a little worse than what it was. Dowling, they're ahead, led for a lot of the game, and then a couple of mistakes late, and Dowling overtakes them. So there's got to be a little question, can we get these games and close it against a good quality team? You know, they've, they've had a couple of those wins, but here tonight is they got to get back on the track and they got to close it out and cut down the mistakes against a good team like Johnston. Certainly, and uh, Waukee's victory is coming against Ankeny and Ankeny Centennial, particularly that Ankeny game. I mean, that is a win to hold your hat on and try to build off of the difference um, between the Waukee really coming up with a victory in week one against Southeast Polk and losing, uh, or excuse me, losing to Southeast Polk and then defeating Ankeny. Really the difference in that was just a couple of key plays. A couple and he fourth said down conversions and the, stuff, the, yeah. the third and fourth downs and uh, 
really, as they say, minimizing the mistakes. Sometimes a possession that ends with a punt isn't the end of the world as long as you're making the other team play the field position game. For Waukee, their quarterback, Jacob Holcomb, he's been pretty good this year. We talked about it coming in. Uh, he's replacing a guy who threw for 1,000, rushed for over 1,000 yards, and he's got the passing right there. He hasn't rushed as much, but he hasn't had to. He's got a guy like Aaron Smith, four TDs in that game against Dowling last week. He's got Alex Lindquist, Eddie Sadat. He's got a lot of weapons, so... Uh, not running as much, but he doesn't really have to run as much, does he? No, and that's one of the things that the quarterback has really learned in this season is you take what the defense gives you. You might go in with a plan of we'd really like to throw it all around the yard and then find, wow, we're finding a lot of running lanes or vice versa, but what he's not doing is he's not forcing things. There are a couple of times early in the season, weeks one and two, where we saw him Take some incompletions, and quite honestly, I was like, that's a smart play. Live to play another down instead of forcing something, maybe causing a turnover. And mention Aaron Smith. That's one thing that uh, Coach Whitley also <laughs> mentioned. He said, you know, you got to know where he's at all the time because he can hurt you on special teams. He can hurt you on offense. He also can hurt you on defense. Just all around uh, player, uh, as close as we have to a uh, – I want to say, well, he has played two ways, but as an all-around player, maybe in the lower levels where you have to play every down, you know, in the lower classes, he's as close as we have, I think, here in 5A this year to that, or well, 4A. And, and in addition to that, it, it's funny that you bring up the number five because what I think of the comparison is in baseball they say a five-tool athlete, and that's really what you've got there. Uh, I have a feeling that if in a, a situation – the, the placeholder went out. They'd say, hey, we might be able to, to use you there, too. I mean, <laughs> well, the, the, the key for coaches at this level, and we uh, uh, talked about uh, or heard Johnson's coach talking about that in Smith with Waukee, is you want to get your playmakers out and put them in a position to make a play as often as possible. That's why, for Johnson, one of the keys is going to be, let's try to limit the number of times Smith touches the ball because they know that if the Warriors are going to come away with a victory tonight, it's likely that Smith is heavily involved. I think it's going to come down again, though, to when we talked about this line play, the, the defensive line, a, a couple injuries there for Waukee. But, uh, you know, they've been pretty good all year long at keeping uh, the offensive linemen off their linebackers in, and uh, defensive backfield. And then uh, I've watched a few of the Johnson games, and, and they've, been, they've done the same thing. And at this level, you got to have a good line. You got to be able to, uh, you know, play it in the trenches to be successful here in the in the top class. Well, you can say that at about almost any level, but you're absolutely right. Is how a team, you know, uh, Friday nights and then Saturdays in the college game and Sundays in the professional game. Everybody knows the the uh, playmakers, the uh, skill positions. They're the jerseys that are being sold. You and I know that games are won and lost uh, at the line on both sides of the ball. Yeah, if your quarterback gets more time, he looks great. If uh, you know, even if you got an outstanding quarterback or running back or receivers, if he's going to get sacked, then he's not going to he's not going to end up doing anything. So. A beautiful night here, 81 and breezy, and that breeze could play a little bit into this maybe tonight here as it's blowing across the football field, but uh, warming up almost like a, a good late September warm football night here at Waukee as uh, the team's getting ready to come on out. We're going to uh, take another break, and we'll come back. We'll have more of the pregame after this on CISN.TV. We might not always know what the day will bring, but some things are certain. The sun will rise and your lights will go on. That's because at MidAmerican Energy, we're obsessively, relentlessly committed to providing you energy when and where you need it, to connecting with you and keeping our communities safe and strong. Because the most important thing we put our energy into is you. We're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. Focus. 
to define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor, and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. Godfather's Pizza's Autumn Feast. A medium specialty pizza, a medium pepperoni pizza, and my new caramel apple streusel with Twix candy pieces. Get yours today. In Iowa, we grow corn. But to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. You can buy a new Ford at any Ford dealer. Why Schottenkirk Ford? Our core values. Hard work, trust, character, integrity, honesty, and respect. During Schottenkirk Ford's fall savings event, get up to $12,500 off 2020 F-150 XLT. No goofy rebates. Everyone qualifies. Up to $12,000 off 2020 Expedition XLT. New 2020 EcoSport four-wheel drive starting at $18,990. Our certified used vehicles come with a 12-month, 12,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. Hurry in. Schottenkirk Ford, Indianola. SchottenkirkFord.com. Here at Waukee Stadium, Darn Daniels and Eric Zamora on CISN.TV with our crew here tonight. And Eric, one big key, we got to watch that phone down on the sideline with a red light on it. If that red light flashes, that's the hotline to Boone. So we may have to see if they pick that up and then pull somebody out of the game. But no, I'm being facetious, but uh, it's been quite a week here with all that's uh, transpired with uh, this transfer stuff and that. And uh, it, uh, I just hope they figure it out so it works out the best for the kids and everybody in, in this whole thing. Yeah, and obviously it's been a an unprecedented season, an unprecedented year. And with as many stories as you've had with um, schools not being able to play. In fact, uh, we had that uh, seven on uh, seven kind of expose going on today um, with uh, some of the players not a- able to. And, and the Des schools, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, then, and then obviously with... Uh, you know, there are going to be situations where kids might have to miss games. Credit to the Iowa High School Athletic Association for working through all of these intangibles, things that 12 months ago we wouldn't have fathomed. And while it's not what we had hoped for and expected, it's it's football. And yeah. the fact that they're still able to keep this rolling, there are a lot questioning whether there would be games at all and maybe if the whole thing wouldn't be shut down after a couple of weeks. Uh, but I think uh, to this point, uh, the uh, people in charge have put everyone in the best position to succeed. And because of that, that's why we're out here in uh, Waukee on a Friday night. And you see the players, the Waukee players are in the end zone and uh, got to thinking this is could be the second to last home game they play as – one school, one United Waukee, because they're going to be splitting off into two schools next year, and we'll have Waukee Northwest. So, uh, the, the, you know, this season was already starting out to be one for the books for them, mm-hmm. and, and then add on all the other stuff. And uh, you're like me. We're, we're just glad to be here and broadcast them, and they're just glad to be out playing them. So it's, it's just good to be here, I guess. And in addition to that, don't forget that this is a year where everyone is going to make the postseason. That's yep. a big change. Um, we've seen, though, I mean, changes at the uh, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League, and NBA League. So obviously, uh, Iowa High School says, hey, we're more than willing to adapt to that as well and uh, try to find a way to make things work. And I think they've, uh, they've done that in the idea of we're going to go with a shortened schedule then have everybody make the postseason. Now... Refresh, are, do they seed it then after when they go into the playoffs? Is that the way they work it, or do we know that yet? I'll be honest. I'm not 100% sure, I'm but sure my thought either. is it's week five. That's something to worry about down, yeah, the, down road the road because yeah. I know. I, I've learned <laughs> in the uh, broadcasting industry over the last few weeks is we don't plan out too far these days. It's pretty much if it's Friday, hey, yeah. let's hope we're still doing what we think we're going to be doing on Monday. And when the ball kicks off, we just are happy to get in four quarters and have a, a good game. So... Looks like Johnson has declined, deferred, and looks like Waukee will accept the kickoff, and Aaron Smith will be 
he's out there. He'll be one of them that'll be back to receive that kick here from Nick Nygren. And another all-around, we'll talk about this later on if it comes to it, but Jack Rutz, he's a quarterback. He's also the punter, which <laughs> Coach Scott Carlson said, yeah, that, that brings up some interesting things too here um, when he's the punter for Johnson as well as the quarterback, and I have to keep an eye on that as the game advances here tonight. So just about ready to kick it off. I will say one thing I was a little surprised with is the fact that Waukee out there in the charcoal gray uniforms would have expected them to go either purple or black to be a little bit more contrasting to the white jerseys. Jersey. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to mistake it, but usually you really like those color contrasts. Yeah. Instead, they kind of went in the uh, middle-ish of the light to dark jerseys. Well, and these both, both these teams are predominantly purple here, mm -hmm. so it's, it's kind of the way it goes as we get ready to kick it off. And... Comes kickoff is going to come deep into the end zone for a touchback. And Waukee will take over first and 10 at the 20 yard line. Jacob Holcomb, the quarterback, Lindquist, the running back. Garrett Sperling, Bo Schaller, Hayden Hoxmeyer, Matt Kapuska, Brennan Matthews, the line up front for Waukee as he comes out. Holcomb. Say that coming across the slot. We'll hand off to Lindquist. He'll cut it up. Piles ahead. Got hit, but moves ahead and going to get about five on the run. No surprise there for Waukee. Start out with uh, what you know, and their bread and butter is 26, Lindquist. And again, that really opens up your playbook on second and five, second and six ish. These are my least favorite uniforms for seeing the numbers. They are hard to see <laughs> now. There's a fake inside. Now they'll throw it out wide to Smith. Smith cuts across the 35, 40, 45, and is knocked out of bounds. Well, they're going to say stepped out a little bit earlier. Up to the 44, but that'll be a pickup of nine. Kriegel on the tackle. Caden Coonan, Jackson Mueller, Ian Dolan, Matt Thompson, Aiden Moore, JT Puck, Kate Godwin, Trey Walker, Carter Kriegel, Will Scott, and Caleb Helgeson, the defensive starters here for Johnston. In the white on the right of your screen. There's a fake to Lindquist. Holcomb will keep it himself, runs right up the gut and gets pulled down pretty quickly there by Katie Goodwin. Godwin. And so right out of the bat, no surprise, uh, again, they, they want to get the ball in their playmaker's hands. We've seen Linquist and Holcomb run, and then the other one was a pass to Smith. They want to see if those players can't create some separation in open space. Put Sadat on the slot on the right. Linquist back there with Holcomb. Two receivers left. Fakes to Linquist across the middle to the tight end. It's in his hands, and then he dropped it. Are they going to wave it off, or are they going to say a catch and a drop? It looks like they're marking it. For catch and a drop, so it's going to be a catch and then a turnover. Fumble at the 44. Aiden Moore, the linebacker, recovers it. I didn't think he had possession fully when he got hit on that. I didn't think so either. It's a really controversial call, and obviously this isn't uh, a level where you can go back through a challenge flag and try to look at a video replay, but Waukee is going to have to roll with the punches here. First and 10 at the 43 with 10.46 to play here in the first quarter. Johnston takes over. And smothered in the backfield. The running back, Tubbs. And a loss of four. Gutierrez in on the tackle. Second and 14 at the 39. Jack Rutz, the junior quarterback, sends two receivers to the left, one to the right. Tight end goes in motion. They're slotting motion right up the gut. They run with it. 
And Aiden Moore on the run. Aiden Moore, a six foot one, 205 pound senior, eating up uh, some big yards that they lost there. And I know third and eight isn't ideal, but it looked like it was going to be a much tougher conversion much than better this. better than third and 15. <laughs> Here's Rutz. Drops straight back, looking, looking. Throws out to left in the flat. Hits the tight end. He breaks the tackle. Tyler Moore, and he'll get up for the first down. The 6'5", 240-pound senior. He, he holds up to a hit out there, doesn't he? He certainly does and was able to make it a 16-yard catch and run because he was hit right at the... Yard to gain, could have even been about half a yard short, but then just muscled his way for first down and more. Carter Krieger wide to the right. Vinny Cresta to the left. Now they'll switch the backs over. There's a handoff to Aiden Moore, and he'll get hit right at the line of scrimmage. And... Aiden Moore is a different starter than what I had in the lineup he gave me. It was uh, Blake Tubbs, but Aiden Moore in there starting. He's played some here. So second and 11 after a loss of a yard. They got Tyler Moore, the tight end, slotted to the right. He comes in motion. Now goes back the other way. Dropping back, looking to his right, and he's going to be smothered under. Big sack. By ben Ryland, the defensive end there, came in. 6'3", 243-pound junior. It's Ryland, Kona, Gutierrez, and Menz, the front for Evanson, Halbert, Colin Evers, Bill Buktar, and Smith, Garrett Morrison, Joe Morrison. The rest of the defense for the Warriors here. So now we got a third and 21 here. Two steps forward, two steps back for Johnston. There's a handoff, and a flag is down right away. And there might have been motion before they got that playoff, Eric. Yeah, I think there was, and going back to that sack big loss of 10 and in addition to that that was really the difference between that completion to Moore. Rutz had all the time in the world and then there was only one person who was getting through but credit Ryland just beat his man and then swallowed up Rutz hole. So there's an illegal shift and they're going to decline that because it'll be a fourth down and the ball right at the 50 yard line and Joe Morrison will go back deep to receive the punt from Rutz. The quarterback who also punts for Johnston. The single safety back there. And he hits a low line drive. It's going to bounce high. He'll take it at the five and a great tackle tripped up down there. That was uh, Vincent Cresta, Vinnie Cresta. On the stop. So Waukee will now take over. First and 10 at the five. And that punt was fantastic. Looked like it was going to die at about the two or one. And the returner thought, if I can quick get my hands on it, might beat this one man. I've got some room to run. But instead, it was Cornwell there on the stop. Hand off up the middle. Lindquist. Well, and that bounce hurt him. It's kind of like when that ball bounces to the shortstop. He had to wait for it to come down. Mm -hmm. And by that time, the defenders got to him. So, well, give him one. It's probably a one and a half, but we'll call it one here. Holcomb trips to the right. Now sends a man across the formation. And there's a flag down. And. We might have a motion penalty here, which would move it back half the distance. Illegal procedure against Yep. 
And it's a double-edged sword, this penalty. Obviously, it's nice that as Waukee, you don't lose as much yardage as you normally would, but you don't have much room to work with. And right now, it's uh, Johnson winning the field position battle. Waukee's got to give themselves some breathing room. Well, in his own end zone now, Holcomb gives it right to Lindquist. He finds a little daylight, not much, but gets him out of there a little bit so that it would be a third down and about nine. And You're right, Lindquist not able to get a ton there, but it, again, everything favors the defense there, so four yards is critical here for Waukee. Holcomb steps out, looks to the sideline. Got two receivers to his right. Hands it off to Lindquist. Lindquist cuts right up the middle. And they get about four yards. Or was that Spikesma? Yeah, Tanner Spikesma in there. He's been getting a little more time uh, spelling Lindquist lately. And he gets... He gets three, so it'll be fourth down now. Fourth and four at the 11. So if anything else, Johnson should be able to flip the field here depending on how good a punt Lucas Bartacek gets. And with the win, there's a little wind coming at him. Rolling across right to left in the stadium. High snap, and this one is blocked. Deflected, they're gonna pick it up, and he'll be tackled in. That was an issue last week against Dowling where the snap went over his head and he had to take the safety. And now Johnston here set up first and 10, first and goal at the 10. So they're going to take an official's timeout here. Safety timeout, a COVID break. We'll take a break here. No score, 456 to play in the first quarter on CSN.TV. Iowans know that winter means snow, ice, and freezing temps. Severe weather can make the roads downright dangerous. Truck Equipment Incorporated has the toughest work equipment that can stand up to the harshest conditions. Look for Western brand snow plows, quality you can count on. Buy new or utilize our repair services. We'll order new parts for same day pickup or delivery. And now you can shop from home with our virtual showroom. Go to truckequipment.com today. At MidAmerican Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. We support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades. All to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Here at Waukee after the block punt recovered by Johnston. They're first and goal to go at the 10 yard line here. 456 to play in the first quarter. And Rutz brings them out. Sends a man in motion. Drops back, goes the fade to the left side to the tight end. Touchdown, Johnston. Went straight to Tyler Moore, and you can see him go that corner all the way. And Johnson strikes quickly off the turnover. One play, and it's a uh, Rutz to Moore touchdown pass. That's just one of those plays where the quarterback knows where his receiver is going and just throws it in a general area and has faith he'll come down with it. The extra point is up and good. Johnston 7, Waukee 0. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with a kickoff after this on CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars.
Here at Wonky. Nigren ready to kick off for Johnston. A one play drive after the block punt. They got it to 10. Quickly through the end zone. Rutz hits his big tight end Tyler Moore for the touchdown. And they get the extra point. Now it's 7-0. And they'll kick off to Wonky. This one's going to go high and deep and out of the end zone. And Wonky will take start over first and 10 at the 20. So Eric, you got to wipe that all away and, and take on. And we know we've seen uh, Waukee. They played from behind before here. So now they find themselves in an early hole, but that's the thing. It is early. If you're the Warriors, you have to have that short memory. And, again, things could have been worse already. They've seen a fumble and a blocked punt. So, like you said, only down by seven. They just need to build on it from here. Send Smith in motion. Handoff up the middle. Finds a hole. Bust through there is Tanner Spikesma. And he gets nine. And he seems to have a little quicker burst to the hole than Lindquist. Lindquist is a more of hit the hole and pound people. <laughs> but Spikesman scattered right through there. Second and one at the 29. Makes the handoff. Holcomb will keep it himself. Wins his way up. He's going to get the first down. And there's that case where he, he doesn't run a lot, but he runs and, and runs when he needs to. And there he got needed one, he got three. Yeah, and for Holcomb, like you said, he's not going to be one of those uh, running or run first quarterbacks. But when that's what the defense offers, he'll take it and the first down. Single back, hands it off up the middle, got a hole, busts across, and he was one. Arm tackle away from going the distance. Spitzma busts it across up to the 45. Just caught him there as he burst through the hole, but if that misses, then it's off to the races. Shoestring tackle and a big one for Johnson. Same formation here. This time they get the slot. Say that coming across. He blocks left. They cut him on the outside. Turns it up. And now out of bounds for another first down. Yeah, Alex Lindquist has Lindquist. just been pounding the rock here. As At first it looked like he was going to get about seven or eight if he took the inside, but then just slid outside and had plenty of room there. Hole come up, first and 10, now into Johnston territory at the 42. Hands it off, Smith coming around the formation and they'll trip him up after gaining about one. Didn't allow him to get around the corner. It's not gonna go down as a big play, just the gain of one, but again, at this point, if you're Waukee, you want to get the ball into Smith's hands as often as you can because yeah. those are like popcorn kernels, and every once in yeah, a while yeah. he's going to heat up right. and they're going to pop. The defense will have to be watching him and going to get him on their heels a little bit because you never know when he, he – you're right, he's going to turn and pop one. Here comes Smith across the formation. He turns it up, fakes. Now they're going to go deep. Smith up the right side, wide open. Oh, just over the fingertips. That is one of those where both the quarterback and the receiver wish they'd made just a little the bit more. more on it. It was a catchable ball, but not a perfect ball. And at the same time, I have a feeling that five's going back to the huddle and saying, yeah, maybe guys, yeah, that's on way out. Me, yeah. but give me another opportunity, and I'll come down with that one later in the game. Third and nine, that was a sure touchdown, but just off the fingertips. And Smith, you could tell him, he's still shaking his head. He's mad. He's going to come down here to the right side. Two receivers left. Lindquist swings it out, and he can't handle a little high. And great pressure there by Cade Godwin because 33 was cutting across and in direct line of that pass, then the pass was a little bit high off the hands of Holcomb. So while he doesn't end up getting his hands on it, he ends up, in essence, making sure that that play is blown up from the start. They considered, I think, going for it for a second here, looked at it, and then decided they're going to send out Garrett Schmidt. 
and I think because of their field position, they certainly would have thought about it if it had been in that fourth and three, fourth and five range, yeah. but nine's asking a lot. That's a lot. He's averaging 35.1 a kick. High snap again. He goes back. Now he's got to run. He's under pressure, and he's dragged down. He can't get the punt off. He did just a good enough job to keep that from turning into six by running it down, but... Another high snap. And for Garrett Schmidt, that wasn't a designed play oh. as uh, he just, it looked like for a second he was going to try to make the pass and uh, at least if he gets it incomplete, not lose that yardage. But the last thing you want to do is uh, chuck one up there into a receiver who or a defensive player who's running that way. That could have been a pick six. Or, though, if you threw it down and somebody catches it and gets tackled, you, you know, your right. field position. But, yeah, right, right, right. I think he realized there's nowhere to go. Rutz back out, sends a tight end in motion out to the right. Rutz rolling right, looking down the field, oh, then throws it long over the head, over Carter Krieger's, Kriegel's head there. Second and 10 at the 46. Kriegel, the Z receiver for the Dragons. And, yeah, he was uh, rolling out there, and it looked like the quarterback and receiver just weren't on the same page. But for Rutz, he's got to be happy with what he's seeing so far. He's finding some options. He's going to send Hovey and Cresta down here to the left side. The tight end goes in motion. Then he hands it off to the back. And enters Blake Tubbs, who's in, and he picks up a couple. So to bring up third and eight. Haven't seen Tubbs involved in the offense uh, yet, but that's a great problem to have if you're Johnson. You've got a 7-0 lead, and you haven't even needed to get Tubbs involved. And again, it's just that idea of change of pace. All the players do things a little bit differently. And hey, variety is the spice of life. You want to see how many different players, if you're Johnson, you can start getting into the offensive game plan. Cresta to the left, Kriegel to the right, dropping back, looking to throw Rutz. Pulls it back down. Now he's going to run for it. And he's going to run out of bounds about the line of scrimmage, maybe pick up one. So credit the Waukee defense here. And that defense has already been on the field a lot here because the offense has not generated much. So they're going to fourth down. Rutz will go back to punt. And Morrison back to receive. And Rutz had a great bouncing putt, punt the last time. High snap, he handles it. This one he sends high and deep. Morrison will let it bounce, and it'll get into the end zone, so smart play there. And Waukee starts to drive again on the 20 here, their third time. The other one started at the 5 with 1.33 to go here. They need to get a drive together with no, no errors, no turnovers here. Yeah, so far it has been a fumble, a blocked punt, and then – a punter who was sacked basically after he was scrambling snap, for his yeah. life. Yeah. Here's a handoff up the middle on a delay. And Lindquist picks up some good yardage on first down, about six. Lindquist has certainly been the uh, highlight of the Waukee offense to this point. And a good misdirection there. Get everybody thinking that he's going to the left, cuts back to the right. Big pickup of seven on first down. Senior linebacker Aiden Moore. On the tackle. Now well, he sends a receiver to each side. He's got that H back in there. Looks out quickly to Hayden Hundley. He makes the catch and spins out of bounds for a first down. Hundley's not a big, fast, uh, breakaway guy, but he's a, he runs good routes and, and gets open and gets yardage when they need it, it seems like. And they certainly needed it there. And a nice job there by... Holcomb, seeing that there was pressure coming, and he got that out of his hands quickly and avoided the sack. First and 10 at the 35, just under a minute to play. 
Handoff goes back the other way. Lindquist trying to turn the corner. He does. Cross the 50. There's flags down, though. Is this going to come back? Yeah, I think they're going to get the receiver out on that left side for a block in the back. Loved what Lindquist did there. Again, misdirection. Get everyone thinking he's going one way, cuts to the other, and it's really going to be a costly penalty because I think if the receiver had let him go, let him go there's yeah. a chance Linquist was going to beat him anyway. Yeah, and he, he was either going to break it or get a big gain to where he was down to the 41, but now they're going to bring it back. So, holding called. Now, it won't look as bad because it ends up still being a first and ten play because the the, the holding came right with the first 10, down. Yeah. yeah, it was 10 Area. yards down the field. But it cost them another probably 20 in gain. Yeah, 25. Here's a handoff. Lindquist again. He's trying to cut back outside. He cuts up and gets pulled down by Godwin. And Puck in there, too. Second and nine, and that may be the last play of the first quarter. Let's see, Waukee may let the clock run down here. They will. Well, no, they're going to come up. Let's see what he does. If he snaps it or well, they're going to go ahead and play it. Drop back, look quick out. Comebacker breaks free. Far side up across the 50. And inside Johnston territory. Dale Stout with the catch. And Kriegel on the stop. Uh, the first quarter down, Waukee, or Johnson leading Waukee 7 0 here. Back with the second quarter after this on CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly. And if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemaker. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Here at Waukee, one quarter complete. Johnston leading 7 0, but Waukee in Johnston territory after that last play. Darn Daniels and Eric Zamora here with you. We got Ruben, Randy, and Dave on the crew here. As Eric, Waukee's shown they, you know, they can make some plays here. It's just stringing them together without a turnover or a costly error or penalty. I would say overall, Waukee has probably been the more explosive team, but Johnson's been the team that hasn't made mistakes. And more often than not, the team who makes the fewest mistakes is going to come away with the W through 12 minutes of play. That's why the Dragons are on top of the uh, scoreboard. But if you're Waukee, you've got to be talking about right now going into the second quarter going, guys, we had a fumble. fumble we had yeah. a blocked, blocked punt. punt. They we got had a, a, they a got punt a, that didn't get off. In. Yeah, and we stopped them every time. And since. we are right now at basically midfield with an opportunity to go down and tie up the ball game. So don't worry about what's happened. Let's just learn from those, and let's get better on all three sides of the ball. Where's Johnson? They're coming out feeling good. Got the lead here. Here's Jake Holcomb. That shotgun sends a man in motion across formation. Fakes to Lindquist, drops back, throws it deep for Smith. Has it. Touchdown. 49 yards. And I tell you what, everybody's going to talk about the throw from Holcomb. Everybody's going to talk about the 
reception from Smith. But don't forget about Linquist there. Holcomb gets it's lit up yeah. if the running back doesn't do a great job. He wasn't able to fully get out in front of him, but it was just enough to, to chip him it. wide. You're right. Yes. You're right. Kept him out of the way and let uh, Holcomb wind up and throw it deep. Bartichak and uh, kicked the extra point. He's 7-7 on the season on PATs. And we're a kick away from being back even. Oh, high snap. And there's the old announcer jinx. I shouldn't have said he was 7-7. Seven seven. But again, we talk about the snap. The, the snap. Issues for Waukee, so it'll end up being 7-6. Seven, and that makes the score Johnston 7. And we'll keep it right here as we get ready for the kickoff. And Got to love what you've seen out of Holcomb so far through a quarter and seven seconds. He's five out of seven for 104 yards, and he's getting different players involved. Four different players already have caught passes for the Warriors. So in other words, Johnson's sitting there going, it's not like, oh, we just got to worry about Smith. Smith They've no. really got to worry about a lot of playmakers. And then when you start worrying about those receivers, you hand it off to Lindquist, and he pounds it up the middle on you. The one-two punch here. Now what Johnson a chance. We'll see what they get on the return. And where they'll start with their field position. Their first score came off the block punt. It was at the 10, and it was one play. They ran it in. Blake Tubbs, Carter Kriegel back deep, and Vinny Cresta back to receive. Ward Johnston, check kick. Coming. And this one he's going to kick deep. And with that win, it's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. So, Johnston. Start. Centennial up 14-0 on Ames. And Ames, one of those teams that had it tough, they're just back off of uh, being out for COVID. Mm -hmm. And they didn't get a chance to practice a lot, so... And Centennial really needing to win here. They've been fighting, had a rough schedule themselves. And For these two teams, we should talk instead about their schedule and more about their gauntlet. Ankeny up 14-3 on Valley, 11.56 to go in the second. Bank handoff right out to the tight end. He's got some room, 35-40, and up to about the 45-yard line, Tyler Moore. It's going to be a 24-yard catch and run. He's already at 50 on three receptions and then shows the strength. There was a Waukee player really trying to punch that ball out. Moore made sure he had it secured with both hands into the gut. And he's already got, Moore already has uh, 25 catches, 333 yards coming in and three TDs, a 39-yard touchdown. Looks like maybe a little pressure on the outside, but they get it into Moore. Good read there by Rutz as the blitzer came from that side and Moore just came open in that hole, read it, and he hit him quickly, and it's a first down for Johnston. And it's the exact opposite story of what we were just talking about. Waukee's been spreading out the ball for Johnson. It's all been 82, the tight end. He's got all four receptions for his squad so far. Rutz will bring him out since Carter Kriegel to the left. He's got uh, Cresta here to the right, along with Hovey to the right. And the tight end on the left is Moore. Drops back. Moore goes down and out. And just off his hands. And Smith was there almost to pick that up. Off the ricochet, but that was just a quick down and out by the tight end. And he was there. Double cover, but he was open. If he catches it, he's going to get close to the first down. And again, the offensive line of the Johnson squad giving their quarterback protection, giving him time, and giving him a chance to make a play. Hovi Serrata come down to the bottom here. Hovi goes in motion. Drop back, hands it off to the deep back, and he'll cut right up there, Blake Tubbs. Blake Tubbs is the running back, number 
Gets about four down to the 41. We'll bring up third and six for the Dragons. Aiden Moore was the back that Johnson went to on that first drive, but since then it's been Tubbs who's uh, been getting back in action. And again, a nice luxury for Johnson to have, be able to spell one another. Well, Tubbs was on the starter sheet that the coach sent me, but then Moore started, so I don't who knows what happens with that? Maybe something they saw or anyway, dropping back, throwing it out. And this time, I think that was deflected at the line of scrimmage there. I think Ben Ryland got a little beast of that because he was looking for Tyler Moore out in the flat. And if he gets more, he's probably got the first down and maybe some more. Yeah, just a little screen out to Moore. And like you said, it didn't look like that ball came at him cleanly. I would bet dollars to donuts that somebody got a finger nail or two on it. Morrison back deep. Rutz back to punt. And he's going to kick this toward the center there. And Morrison takes it and no fair catch. And so he goes down right just beyond the 10 where Waukee will take over. Little surprise there that he didn't wave for the fair catch just to give himself a little bit of a breathing room. And you're right. As soon as he had that one on his hands, he had pressure, and he was brought down immediately. No return on the punt. So Waukee now has it on offense, and we'll see what the Johnston defense. Can they hold them back in there, or can Waukee go on another big drive? In motion is Smith. Hand off to Smith. Looking to turn the corner. Smith turns on the Jets. 15, 20, 30, 40, 50. Goodbye. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. 89-yard run, Aaron Smith does it again. Aaron Smith, when he reached about the 30, 35-yard line, <laughs> at that point it was, I mean, you got to run to impress yeah, your coach. When, when he hit the 20, then he shifted it up but with the there high was gear, no, and boom, and then there was nobody was going to catch him, was there? <laughs> wow, Aaron Smith. You know what's coming, but... Not much you can do. And I like this play here. If they're going to go for one, don't chase that extra point right now. You, they miss, They didn't get the one off. The key here, though, is can they get the snap down and get the point up? For Bartacek. Good hold. This time the kick is up. And the kick is good. Waukee takes their first lead. 13-7 on the 89-yard burst by Aaron Smith. We'll take a break, come back after this on CISN.TV. Obsessively, relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile, regardless of the times. Our team remains committed to you. Back here at Waukee, Aaron Smith's 89-yard, I don't know, scamper burst, you gotta say. <laughs> and he puts Waukee in the lead here against Johnston. And what a momentum swing. Waukee has scored two touchdowns in the last minute and 59 seconds. And if you are wondering, how long does it take Aaron Smith to run 89 yards. Well, uh, it just takes 13 seconds. And by the way, that wasn't a straight run. That was with him cutting to <laughs> yeah, the right and then. Fuckers. 13 seconds, so yeah. He has the speed. That one's in the end zone for a touchback, and Johnson will take over first and 10 at the 20. That's where they were last drive, got down to the 41 before they had to punt. And then Waukee came out. You know, I've really play. liked what I've seen out of this season of football, and what I mean by that is it seems like all of the teams can say, we've had some great moments, we've yeah. had some that we need to clean up, but it's really been exciting football here through week five. Here's Rutz, two receivers right, two left. The one inside left is that tight end that he's hit a couple times already tonight. He breaks free, can't see him though. He's got a scramble. But Tyler Moore got to the second level, and he would have been open, but Rutz had to run. Gutierrez brings him down, but he picks up five. Well, we'll call it four. 
and Rutt's nothing sexy about that, but when you don't have a good option downfield, you find that lane and four yards three times will get you a first down every time. He's rushed uh, 125 yards, three touchdowns, a 67-yard touchdown, 67 on one of those runs, and this is right up the middle, and he's stacked up. No room for Tubbs there. Now here the Waukee defense has him third and six. Tubbs fortunate there to get back to the line of scrimmage, and Tubbs is a player that if you get him in a one-on-one, -on -one, he's got an opportunity to make somebody miss. But when he runs into a wall of three or four guys, Tubbs isn't winning that battle. Big third down now for Johnston, and they keep the drive going here now after finding themselves trailing for the first time in this ball game. Trips to the left, one to the right for Rutz. Drops back, pressure coming. He's got to roll out of it. Throws up field, lobs it up there. Oh, almost caught. Just about got it to Vinnie Cresta on the sideline between two defenders. That was a nice throw by Rutz to drop it in there, but Cresta couldn't come up with it, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Well, and it certainly was. Rutz first is flushed out of the pocket, then still pressure, and it looked like he was about to get uh, tackled by his cleat, able to make a great floating pass and just not able to get it in. But that was a tight window he was able to slide that pass into. Morrison back at his 41 to receive. This one is a high punt. He's going to come all the way up, take it at the 47, cuts through the defenders, down to the, well, over across the 40. He kept going there. On an offensive play, we'd say he split the defense there, but splits the special teamers. But a great job by Morrison, not trying to do too much, saying, hey, I'll take those extra couple of yards and great field position for the Warriors to build off of those last two scoring drives. 36-yard punt, but it kind of hung up there on him. Holcomb now back in on offense. And Sadat across the formation, hands off, looking to turn it in the outside is Lindquist, and he gets upended there. By. And Lindquist didn't have much to work with there, but was able to kind of take some contact right at the line of scrimmage and then fall forward for two. Cade Caffrey on the tackle for Johnston. Smith comes across in motion. They fake it in his belly, pull it out. Now they'll sit it, hit him, hit him in the flat. He jigs and jags, and he'll get a few yards out of that. He tried to go right, went back left, but you got three defenders there, and they did a good job of just staying put. Good job of protection there, allowing Holcomb to survey the whole field. Didn't like anything that he saw, then dumps it off to Smith and says, hey, I know this guy can sometimes make some people miss. Made him about three miss to get those three yards. But that belly fake to Smith really freezes that defense, doesn't it? Here we go. Hand, hand off on the draw to Lindquist coming back the other way, and he's going to get stacked up at the line of scrimmage. So this will bring up a call here for Waukee. Really 52-yard field goal range. Kaputska, or excuse me, Bartacek has hit a 34-yarder. We'll see if they decide to go for it. They may. Yeah, you're kind of in no man's territory because if you punt it away but punt it into the end zone, then you're only netting about 15 yards on the play. Fourth and four at the 34. Holcomb sends Smith across the formation, left to right. Drops back, looks for Smith. No, he's got it out there to say that. And he skips by the tackler and is going to get down all the way down inside the 10. Eddie Sedat Jr., another one of those weapons. Well, that's his first catch tonight, I think, isn't it? And, yeah, it is. And say that, showing some great feet there. For a guy of his size, you're expecting, all right, once somebody has him wrapped up by the ankles. But he was really able to tiptoe and high-step his way out of trouble and pick up even more yards after that first down was converted. Fourth down conversion, first and goal to nine for Waukee. 
Snap, direct snap to Smith. He cuts it up. There's a flag down. He'll get into the end zone, but that'll be coming back. Holding on Waukee. And I like how the official immediately jumps in and signals to almost tell everybody, hey. Yeah, don't celebrate yet right. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold your horses, people. <laughs> well, we've heard a couple of times some dissension from this Waukee uh, fan base when they've had those holding or block in the back penalties, but uh, they've been pretty obvious to spot up here. So, unfortunately, uh, I don't think that Waukee's got too much of a case to disagree with. And the first time we've seen the direct snap out of uh, Smith here. And again, that's the Warriors saying, let's find more let's ways get in his hands, to yeah. get five the ball. So first and goal at the 22. Holcomb. Hands off. Lindquist up the middle. Cuts across left side. Breaks a tackle. He's got a block. He's going to dive. Touchdown. Lindquist from 22 yards out. It's not too often that you see a costly penalty and then the next play, Waukee says, we're just running up the yeah, stats at just, that point. Let's let's pick up some more yards off of it. Okay, they stopped Aaron. Let's give it to Alex. And the third straight score by Waukee. They're going to take a timeout here. They may be discussing now whether or not to go for mm -hmm. two in this because – and that makes it a true three, two touchdown lead here. And you see the huddle as they talk it over. And wow, just a big switch of momentum here in this ball game, Eric. Yeah, and it really starts in that first quarter with Waukee having some miscues on both offense and special teams, but the defense kept them in it. I mean, they did give up a touchdown on that one play drive, but that was from their own 10 yard line. That's hard, especially when Johnson has a player like Moore that can really get involved. But credit this defense, Waukee's defense, keeping them in it early when they could have been down two, three scores. And then now it's been the offense that's picking up the slack and said, hey, you guys scratch our back. Now we're scratching yours. Yeah, the defense, they forced uh, Johnson to punt in each of their subsequent possessions since that. And they thought they had him back here at the 11, but then <laughs> Smith takes off. And now it looks like they are going to come out and go for two here to try to make it a 21-7 lead. And there's a pass crossed. He's in. Say that. Sadat does it all. He catches the pass. And normally, I'm not a fan of going for a two-point conversion this early in the game. game. The reason I like it for Waukee is they've had trouble with either Snap, field goal yeah. or punt snaps. So in other words, what are you more used to doing? And that's snapping to your quarterback. So get him the ball and see what he can do with it. Sometimes you chase those points and you end up, you know, you're on the narrow end of mm -hmm. it later in the game. But now it's up to Johnston. And what can they do here to come back? As all the momentum has turned, it's been a 49-yard uh, uh, pass, Holcomb to Smith, then a 89-yard run from Smith, and then a 22-yard run from Malinquist. And... Waukee got the two-point conversion pass to Sadat. And they're up 21 to 7. So Coach Woodley over there got to get them settled down and say, hey, let's get a good return and then let's get our offense going and get to work here. Yeah, this is going to be a game where it's going to be a roller coaster. You're going to see those ebbs and flows. The team that's going to come out victorious is not the team that says, all right, we're going to go out there and we expect something positive on every play. It's which team responds when they are facing some adversity. Waukee really struggled early on, and they've said, all right, we'll build off of that. Now it's Johnson's turn to try to say, let's put the pass behind us. 
We're down by two scores, but still two and a half quarters left. Plenty of time. We need to get back to playing Dragon football. And as you mentioned on that last one, how often do you get a penalty where it moves it back and then you score in the very next play? Sometimes that just kills your momentum. Oh, you but. you you talk about not only the, the penalty, but it was a 13-yarder. It, yeah. it kind of drains you because you've just scored, and all of a sudden it's first and goal from the 22. Took him one play to get into the end zone. Tubbs back deep for Johnston. This one is going to bounce in the end zone for a touchback. So this is where Johnson has started with the ball the last three times. And they got it up to the 41 as far as they were able to go into Waukee territory, but they need to. Stringing a little something together here. They'd like to answer, get a score here before the end of the half. They'll send Hovey and Cresta to the right. Hovey goes in motion across the formation. He'll stop there. There's a handoff. And Tubbs gets about three yards on first down. Evanson on the stop. And for Tubbs and Johnson, that's nothing to get dis discouraged with. When things aren't going your way, you're not going to look to try to pick them all up on one play. It's just positive forward momentum that eventually could roll into something bigger. Same formation, this time with the tight end on the right in that H-back slot. And almost, it is picked off. He could go. Smith, touchdown. 25-yarder. Aaron Smith. When the Johnston coaching staff was talking about limiting the number of times Aaron Smith touched the ball, that's exactly what they're talking about. And credit the pass rush. That forced Rutz to get rid of that earlier than he wanted to, and that was the reason he didn't see five creeping up on You're that You're right, pass. and he's been under pressure all night here. He hasn't had a lot of time to look for receivers, and there, I don't think you're right. He didn't get much on that throw, and Smith was able to come right in there, pick it off, and take it back 25 yards. And the PAT is good. 28 to 7. We'll take a break. Come back after this on CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Joe, the car guy with Westside Auto. Without question, the COVID-19 pandemic created many disruptive changes in our lives. Some of us got sick, jobs and income were compromised, it was difficult to even spend time with family and friends. But one thing hasn't changed, and that's Westside Auto Pro's commitment to quality service, and that will never change. We're here to make sure you get maximum performance and reliability from your vehicle. So as we all move forward, keep Westside Auto Pros in mind. You've been through enough. We'll make sure your car is the least of your worries. W. 21-3. Here at Waukee on the sideline, everybody's happy. They've scored four straight times here. And three of those, a reception, a run, and an interception by Aaron Smith. And it's 28 to seven, Waukee after falling down seven nothing. Ankeny's ahead of Valley, 21 to three. And now Johnson coming out, Eric Zamora looking. Well, they gotta cut that pass rush down a little bit because uh, Rutz is not getting much time back there to set and, and throw it. Either that or try to get some kind of running game going to take some of the pressure off. You're absolutely right, and Aaron Smith has scored in six minutes and 24 seconds, has actually scored four touchdowns, but one of them was called back. But the three that have counted have been three different varieties, receiving, rushing, and a pick six. So the uh, Aaron Smith show is on display tonight here in Waukee. And there's a handoff looking for room. Blake Tubbs. Man, I could use him on my fantasy football team on Sundays. <laughs> Pick up of three. 
And that was fortunate for Johnson as it looked like the Wonky squad had a defensive lineman. It looked like he was going to blow up the play before it even developed. And fortunately for Tubbs, he was just able to slip out of there. Otherwise, that would have been a tackle for loss in the backfield. Twins each side for Rutz. Hand off, looking for room, cuts up to the 25, and it'll be pulled down right at the 25, pickup of maybe one or two. So third and five, a big third down here. I know it's only the first half, but even if you don't score, you want to get a drive going and not give the ball right back to Waukee because they're red hot right now. And you want to give your defense a breather. Ruts. Stops, looks over. They check the play now. Looks like they're calling an audible at the line. He's got Tyler Moore, the tight end there on the right side. Drops back, rolling, ruts under pressure, throws downfield, and incomplete. And ruts goes down. He's been under pressure here all night. And it may not seem like a big thing, but even on that snap, it just didn't look like the Dragons were all on the same page. It looked like their timing was a little bit off, and it may not feel like a, a big thing as, as you're viewing it, but I can tell you, when you're down on the field and one person is right in time, but the person next to them is maybe a half second slow, that's how quarterbacks can get lit up. Rutz, who was limping a little bit, now he goes back to punt. Morrison back to Sheev and that one comes off his foot sideways. It's going to get a good bounce though and Morrison Ooh. that could have been danger there because he had the Johnston player right on top of him ready to scoop that up. Particularly when you're up by 21 yeah. points that's uh, normally going to be a situation where you say hey Just I'll let that one roll by roll me by. even if it costs me a couple of yards. Mason Cornwell was right down there for Johnston and if that gets off the hands of Morrison, then... And Cornwell's been one of the bright spots for uh, Johnson. We've called his uh, name and number a couple of times in the broadcast. Hayden Hundley out wide to the right for Waukee. One receiver to He's the He's saying left. that they've only got 10 guys on the field. They do. Now they run in the tight end, Braden Mens, and they're going to have to I think they're going to have to burn a timeout. So <laughs> nice job of recognizing the personnel and normally it goes the other way. They've got too many on the field, not too few. Let's take a break here, a quick break. We'll do that and be back with more after this on CISN.TV. We might not always know what the day will bring, but some things are certain. The sun will rise and your lights will go on. That's because at MidAmerican Energy, we're obsessively, relentlessly committed to providing you energy when and where you need it, to connecting with you and keeping our communities safe and strong. Because the most important thing we put our energy into is you. We're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. 3.59 to play here in the first half. The second quarter's been all Waukee. Four scores. After Johnston scored, 4.51 to go in the first. To block the punt, recovered it at the 10 in one play. They were in the end zone, but since then... They've had trouble against the Waukee defense, and Aaron Smith has turned loose for a reception, a run, and an interception. For Waukee, it's been four scores. For Johnson, it's felt like seven years. Yeah, it has. It's like, can we ever get out of the second quarter here? Well, here comes Waukee, first and 10 at the 37. Holcomb. No, that's not Holcomb. Who is that? Smith Linquist. Or Linquist. There's a flag down. We've seen Waukee with that direct snap to Smith and now to Linquist, and that was, uh, again, they're just trying to get their playmakers the ball uh, directly. Plus it gives a little bit different look out of that Wildcat. And that will move it back. Well, they're going to end up losing about six. Where the block came about three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Or four yards, so back to the 30. First and 17 at the 30. 
Oh, there's a bad snap, and Johnston is on it. And and so on the recovery for Johnston was Matt Thompson. And again, Thompson. don't forget that Johnston's only score of the game came when they got the ball yep. at their opponent's 10. Well, now they're at the 14. They're going to mark it, and that's pretty darn close and in that neighborhood. So this is the spark that the Dragons were needing going into halftime. 3.33 to go here, and if you're Waukee, you're going to be looking for Tyler Moore, the tight end. That's who they went to last time. He set up here on the right side as the H-back goes in motion. Outside, now he goes, stops, looks, goes back into the end zone, and it's gonna, they're going to throw it away as that was pretty well covered by Waukee that time, and Rutz just decided to throw it out there. Rutz is limping a little bit. He's taking some shots. Here, and I know you mentioned that one time he kind of caught his cleats as he was trying to scramble there. Yeah, Rutz has been hit more often than he hasn't when he's dropped back, and there was some contact there in the end zone, but I think that's a good no call because that was an uncatchable yeah, ball. Yeah, that ball was, he was throwing it out way where nobody could get to it, and I think Johnson going to take a timeout here. And now you see the Waukee huddle here. Big for Johnston if they can get a score here, cut it down to two scores before the half, maybe steal a little bit of that momentum away from Waukee. And you talk about momentum for Johnson and Rutz. He was four of five in his first five pass attempts. Hasn't hit one in the last six, and that includes the interception to Smith. So in a game where the both coaches have talked about their, their quarterbacks really needing to grow this year, week to week, game to game, drive to drive, it's about what have you done for me lately? And once a quarterback starts hitting some of those completions, they're going to build off of that. Consequently, the other way, when they're kind of in a rut, sometimes it can get to be an even bigger one. So here comes Rutz. He's got Tubbs with him there. Rolling, rolling. Now throws back across the green, looking for the tight end there, and they can't get him open. Waukee figured that out pretty quickly there. They came up and shut it off. They were trying to get Moore in the flats. Morrison came up. And so it's third and 12. So on the positive side, Rutz finally gets that fifth completion, but it's for negative yardage. And definitely four down territory here. Mm -hmm. You want to either get the first down or get a score before the half. Dropping back, there's the tight end. Goes on an out pattern and it's tipped away. Oh, Morrison. Or no, that's Mukhtar. And Moore still had an opportunity to try to catch it off the defender's fingertips, but a nice job diving, really selling out to make sure that that wasn't coming in to Moore's wheelhouse cleanly, and because of that, it's an incomplete pass. Well, they are going to try the field goal here. Nigren, one of three, a 31-yarder. This will be a 34-yarder. And it's good. We'll call it 33. 28-10, Waukee here with 234 to play in the first half. Great sna snap and, and spot. Got it down immediately for the kicker to have an opportunity to split the uprights. And then again, Waukee has had some mistakes. They certainly have not played perfect through this first half, but that defense bending but not breaking, and really, they, I shouldn't even say bending, as they were able to come up with big stops and the reason that they were able to keep it to three, not seven points. Well, here's what we've had. We've had a high snap on a punt, a bad snap on an extra point, and a bad snap on a shotgun snap, and that's been an issue. Then another high snap on a punt and a block punt. So 
they got to be looking and saying, wow, cut the mistakes, but that's got to give a little momentum to Johnston. You try to sneak in an a onside here right before the half, or Ooh. do you go deep? You know, everybody's thinking. I think you make a case either way. Yeah, you know, it might be if you have a good one to try. I tell you what, I would do it if uh, Waukee was watching any uh, onside uh, film from the Atlanta Falcons. Yep. No, here's a little squibber up, and it'll be caught. No, oh, it bounces away. Picked up, and it's recovered by Johnston. The Dragons will come away with that. Sam Zindel. On the recovery. Well, they didn't, not a traditional onside, but the looper. Even better because yeah. the Dragons end up picking up good field position out of it as well. And once again, Waukee's special teams coming into play into the game and not in a positive way. Yeah, that up guy, you kind of wanted him to get on that and fall on it. It looked like he was going to take it and try to run. So Rutz will come back out now. 2.30 to work with, 2.31. First and 10 at the 34. Pitch back, Tubbs looking for room. He'll be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. And I think he lost a yard in the yeah. carry, and quite honestly, that was a fantastic run for negative one. Yeah, he did, he did good just to lose a yard there because... He was close to losing five in the backfield there. But again, uh, Johnston, you're going to run it here and there to keep the defense on us. But those uh, guys up front, Mans, Gutierrez, Kona, and Ryland, have been tough for Waukee in the middle of that line. Now they're going to bring Kriegel and Hovey to the right. He'll throw it out, looking for Hovey, and it was almost picked off again by Smith. And Smith doing a, a great second and third effort, had it off his fingertips, falling, and then tried to actually use his thigh to keep it up off the turf and then grab it from there. It does end up eventually falling incomplete. They sent two guys out in the pattern, and he was trying to get the short guy there, but... Credit Rutz for still throwing over to Smith's side. And down by 18... If you can get a good positive play here on third and 11, this is certainly could be four down territory. You can see he hit a 33-yarder, so here that'd be a pretty deep field goal attempt. Dropping back, Rutz looking, throws it. Oh, and picked off. There's a flag down, though. We'll see if there was interference. It was Kriegel, and Kriegel was looking outside, and the pass was thrown inside. Yeah, I think this is going to be a defensive P.I. Well, let's see. Get pass interference on the defense. So a big penalty here. There was enough contact there where I could see it, the call being made either way. And if you're the Waukee defense, you've got to – put it yourself in a position where the official can't make that call. You can't have it a, a judgment call either way. And I think some of that was uh, not sure what the route was. Kriegel was looking to go left and go toward the flag there, and uh, Rutz kind of threw it toward the post. But either way, Johnson first and 10 at the 21. They're staying alive here on this drive. Back swings it out to the tight end, but he's going to be pulled down quickly. Moore takes it, and they're finally all over Moore. Speaking of tight ends, men's, the tight end's going to come in on defense here and relieve Gutierrez for a little bit, get some fresh legs in there on the rush. Second and nine at the 19. Clock rolling, 111 here. First half, Johnston trying to get another score off the onside kick. Throw it out this time, and they hit the tight end, but he's upended, submarined by Morrison. And so right now, the Waukee defense keying in on 82 anytime the quarterback Rutz drops back because that's where he's gone with every single reception. Johnston has some timeouts left, but looks like they're going to keep the clock rolling here. Taking a long time to get the play in. I think they're thinking that if they're going to score, they're going to do it from distance and trying to make sure that Waukee doesn't get the ball back this half. Yeah, but you could have two shots here, though. Yeah. 
So they'll take a timeout. We'll take a break here. Don't go away. 26.4 left to go in the first half. Back after this on CSN.TV. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. Thor Danielson, Eric Zamora, the Johnston huddle there. They're trying to get a score in here and cut this lead down. They trail 28 to 10 with 26.4 to go in the first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll watch the Waukee Warrior Regiment play for the first time at halftime at a football game here. The dance team will be out, and it's also homecoming here for Waukee. Johnson scored first. Waukee scored four straight times. Johnson came back with a field goal, then did an onside kick. And now they're trying to score again here. Rutz with Tubbs in the backfield. Blitz, and he'll be sacked. Corner blitz by Smith. Smith will go in and fill the water bottles at halftime <laughs> and do about anything else he needs to do for this football team. So that... Brings up fourth and six at the 17. I think they'll probably call a timeout and go try the field goal maybe, or are they going to go one shot to the end zone? Let's see. They'll call a timeout here. Timeout, Johnson. Johnson takes their final timeout. Well, Eric, they had a little momentum going after that onside kick, but again, credit to Waukee Warrior defense. They stepped up and kind of snuffed it out a little bit here. And they got him down to one make or break play either way at the end of the half. Rutz has dropped back 18 times in the first half. Has only been sacked twice. And when I say that, I mean that it feels like more. But there's just been a ton of times where he's been hurried. hurried where something's him. been hit yeah. at the line. Where he's been, there's been contact made with him as he let it go. And as we saw, that led uh, partially to an interception. And there have been a couple other uh, times where it looked like he was going to find somebody open and it ends up being incomplete because this defensive line for Waukee has just been absolutely dialing up pressure and uh, making it a hot kitchen for Jack Rutz to operate in. So they're going to try a 45-yard field goal with 2.1 to go. Snap, the set, the kick. It's going to wind off to the left. He had enough distance but just hooked it a little bit. And that'll end what's been a wild first half. What were you gonna say? And uh, the the difference there, not only the distance and the length, but the snap just snap wasn't, wasn't as yeah. good as that uh, 33 yarder. And the holder got it down, and I think that you're right, that was part of it there. So we'll take a break here. When we come back, we'll see the Waukee Warrior Regiment marching for the first time at halftime here. We'll show a lot of that for you here tonight on CISN.TV. Focus to define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. For your halftime entertainment, the Waukee Varsity Dance Team, performing a hip hop routine. The team is coached by Megan Schaefer and assisted by Maddie Lazier. Get back, get back, you don't know me like that. Get back, get back, you don't know me like that. Get back, get back, you don't know me like that. 
Piper Cook, Emily McBurney, Sophia Mann, Ellie Shaw, Ellie Sullivan, Kyra Steers, Lauren Petzloff, and Victoria Adams. Okay. We'll have the wonky band coming out. The first time they've been able to play at halftime because of the COVID situation and I know bands, have, I've seen them outside of schools all over practicing and it's good that they get a chance here to finally play and on homecoming night here for Waukee so they'll take the field here and we'll listen to them a little bit when we get a chance as they get into position Waukee up 28 to 10 here at the half. Let's see if they remember how to play at halftime, huh? <laughs> I'm sure they won't forget. That's another thing we forget all the hours and hours of practice they put in. And Good evening, Warrior fans, and welcome to tonight's homecoming performance of the 2020 Rocky Warrior Regiment. The Royal Regiment is pleased tonight to present a portion of their 2020 show, The Lost Boy. It is so good to see the regiment on the field again tonight. Majors, Ellie Johnson, Annie, Anna Rudnitsky, and Jonathan Niebenhoven. Is the band ready? <laughs> Warrior Regiment, the field is yours. Sweetest smile, told me he wanted to 
Oh, I see. That looked like 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 You're watching the Iowa Corn Halftime Show. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Support Iowa corn farmers. The Iowa Corn Halftime Show and the Warrior Regiment playing for the first time this year at halftime at homecoming. And uh, a lot of excited people out there watching this go on. And so... Let's, let's do this. Let's take a break. We'll do that. We'll come back after this. You've been watching the Iowa Corn Halftime Show on CISN.TV. Godfather's Pizza's Autumn Feast. A medium specialty pizza, a medium pepperoni pizza, and my new caramel apple streusel with Twix candy pieces. Get yours today. In Iowa, we grow corn. But to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. You can buy a new Ford at any Ford dealer. Why Schottenkirk Ford? Our core values. Hard work, trust, character, integrity, honesty, and respect. During Schottenkirk Ford's Fall Savings Event, get up to $12,500 off 2020 F-150 XLT. No goofy rebates. Everyone qualifies. Up to $12,000 off 2020 Expedition XLT. New 2020 EcoSport four-wheel drive starting at $18,990. Our certified used vehicles come with a 12-month, 12,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. Hurry in. Schottenkirk Ford, Indianola. SchottenkirkFord.com. I win know that winter means snow, ice, and freezing temps. Severe weather can make the roads downright dangerous. Truck Equipment Incorporated has the toughest work equipment that can stand up to the harshest conditions. Look for Western brand snow plows, quality you can count on. Buy new or utilize our repair services. We'll order new parts for same day pickup or delivery. And now you can shop from home with our virtual showroom. Go to truckequipment.com today. At MidAmerican Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. 
we support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades, all to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Back here at Wonky, Dar Danielson along with Eric Zamora. He's been crunching numbers, and there's been a lot of numbers to crunch here in that first half, Eric. Well, and uh, for Waukee, early on, they were really having a hard time moving the ball, but they have outgained the Johnson squad substantially. Holcomb, uh, through the first half, is 8 of 10, so he, he hasn't been asked to be called upon that often, but he's been efficient. That includes a 49-yard touchdown pass to Smith, a two-point conversion to Eddie Sadat a Jr., and uh, all told, he has 134 yards through the air. Meanwhile, the Waukee has 175 on the ground, although that stat a little skewed because of Aaron Smith ripping off over uh, half of that on one run for 89 yards. Uh, so he's got uh, 90 on two carries, while Lindquist is pacing the squad. He's got 82 on 12 totes of the rock. On the other side, Johnston started out really strong through the air. Jack Rutz, uh, four, excuse me, yes, four of his first five passes went complete, but he ends up uh, with seven of 16 for 63 yards and had a string there where he had six in a row that weren't completed, and then those three last completions were just dinks and dunks uh, as they were the three plays combined for just two yards. Meanwhile, Tyler Moore doing it all for the Dragons on receiving. He's got all seven catches for 63 yards. And then Blake Tubbs, seven receptions for, or excuse me, seven runs for 13. So the Johnson Dragons only able to put up 63 yards of offense, 20 on the ground and then 43 in the passing game when you take away 20 yards for the two times Jack Rutz has been sacked. So let's run that down. It was in the first quarter, 4.51 to play. Johnston blocked the punt, recovered it at the 10-yard of uh, the 10 yard line, and then it was uh, one play. Rutz to uh, Tyler Moore from 10 yards out. The PAT good, was good. It was 7 nothing. Then in the second quarter, 11.51 to go. It was Holcomb to uh, Aaron Smith, 49 yards. The PAT snap was bad, and it was 7-6 Waukee. Then uh, they forced Johnston to punt. It was taken at the 11-yard line. One play, Smith took it to the right side, turned on the burners, and was gone, 89 yards. The PAT was good, and it was 13-7 Waukee. Then uh, Lindquist was 6.07 to play in the second quarter, a 22-yard run. That was after they had it down first and goal and got a penalty, and that brought it back to, what was it, about the five, and it brought it back mm -hmm. to the 22. But Lindquist then rips off a run. They got the two-point conversion to Eddie Sadat Jr., and it's 21-7. Then it was uh, a pick six by Aaron Smith with 529 to play in the second, a 25-yard touch interception return. PAT was good. It was 28-7. Then it was a, a Nigren 33-yard field goal, and that made it 28 to 10. Then they kicked a little blooper kick. Waukee guy touched it, fumbled it, recovered by Johnston. But the Waukee defense held them out of the end zone. And uh, when they got down there and had a couple plays at it, and then they ended up trying a 45-yard field goal. Snap was a little low, and it went off to the right. Had good distance, but off to the right. So that's the way we stand here at halftime, 28 to 10 and looking at it for Waukee you got to say well if we cut down on the mistakes you know Eric we're good we'll be in even better shape here in the second half and for Johnston you know they got to cut down that pass rush a little bit I think give Rutz a little more time back there to throw the ball yeah and uh for them I think they also need to spread the ball out a little bit more as uh, uh it has been more with all the receptions uh, for the Dragons. Um, and then it's about uh, both sides can come back 
at this halftime and say, look, we've made some mistakes, and that's the reason that for Johnson that we're down on the scoreboard and for Waukee, they're thinking if we hadn't made a couple of those mistakes, this might one might almost be out of reach already. Uh, so as uh, the coaching staff, and it's odd to hear them say, but, you know, they talk about having not had that perfect game, and that's a good thing because you want to be building up Upward. to playing your best game as you get into this postseason, whereas we mentioned in the pregame that everybody's getting into the playoffs. Well, when you look at Johnson, Carter Krieger, he came in with uh, 11 catches, 239 yards, and three touchdowns, and he hasn't seen a pass yet. Uh, Vinny Cresta, 8 for 93. He hasn't uh, had one. As you said, Tyler Moore, the only one. Now, he's caught 25 for 333 and three touchdowns, now four touchdowns on the season. But, uh, and Hovey um, hasn't caught one yet. So, as you say, maybe they can get the ball a little more to some of these other receivers because they started keeping a pretty good eye on, on uh, Tyler Moore and double coverage in that after he caught that touchdown pass. So, clock winding down, getting ready to start the second half here. Ruben, Randy, and Dave running the controls and the cameras along with... Uh, Dart Daniels and Eric Zamora here tonight on another beautiful fall night for football. And I'm going to hope this weather keeps going as long as it can here. But I hear we're maybe in for a little cooler. Yeah, weather, I think it's definitely going to be uh, a different look and feel to it uh, a week from uh, tonight. Maybe some more of the hot chocolate type game. So Johnston deferred after winning the toss to start the game, so they'll get the uh, kick start the second half. Blake Tubbs is back there deep. And also Kriegel is back there and Serta back there, or Cresta rather back there for Johnston. Here we go. This one's a kick going to be taken in the end zone, so it'll be a touchback. And that wind is coming pretty good this way from the uh, south to north, so most of those kickoffs have dropped in the end zone for touchbacks. And that's where Johnston will start. First and 10 at the 20 here to start the third quarter. And they need, even if they don't score, they need a solid drive, Eric, to kind of get get up the field a little bit, maybe flip the field a bit exactly. here. Exactly. They're starting out at their own 20. They'd be ecstatic if they even just got a good sustained drive and allowed their defense more time to rest up. Creston Hovey to the right side. Hovey now goes in motion, lines up over there. They hand it off, looking for room. And that running inside has not been, not but a lot in there for Johnson tonight. But to be fair, they really haven't been able to get it to the outside very often, no. and the couple of times they have hasn't been like they've had uh, much success there either. So credit this wonky defense as they have been absolutely a handful for Johnson to try to, to get uh, yards through the air or the ground. Second and 10 now. With some Caleb Helgeson is out now in the pattern. And under pressure, they flip it out there and looking. And pass is incomplete. Hovey wanted a penalty there. He thought he was held or pushed. But again, Rutz, he's had to throw on the run a lot. He's not been able to sit back there in the pocket and pick out a good receiver. So third and 10 right away here for Johnston. Serta and Hovey to the right. They send Helgeson to the left. And more of the tight end out there. He's looking. Now he'll break away. He's going to run a rut. It's looked like he had a lot of room when he started, but it, it closed up on him quickly, Eric. Yeah, it certainly did. And Rutz moving out to the left side. Maybe could have fought there for an extra yard or two, but I like the decision by the quarterback. It's not going to make a difference on the drive. Why don't you go ahead and save that contact for a play where it's going to be the difference between picking up a first down or not. Morrison dropping back deep to receive. 
Special teams have been an adventure for both teams at times here tonight. Rutz is the punter. Booms this one straight up, and it kind of holds up in the wind, and it's going to bounce backwards for Johnson, then back the other way. So they lost a few, but then they gained a few, and it'll be down about the 44. Johnson's 44 is where Waukee will take over on their first possession here of the second half. Now, for the exact opposite reasons, Waukee looking to do the same thing, and that's put together a sustained drive. But at this point, they're starting to think, you know, if we can keep that clock a rolling. Yeah, maybe just keep it on the ground to Lindquist a little bit. and Yeah, just keep the, the digits rolling. There they give it to Lindquist right away. He goes to the right, comes back to the left, and is tackled immediately by uh, Matt Thompson, the senior. And that's exactly the type of play that Johnson uh, needed. That's the first time I've recorded them with a, a tackle for loss in the run game all night. I mean, when you can't uh, prevent the other team from picking up yards pretty much every play, you're going to have trouble getting them off the field. Here's Holcomb. Fakes it to Lindquist, looking out there for Hayden Hundley. He turns, comes across, makes a nice catch and at the 30. And wow, Holcomb placed that right in there on the numbers. And Hayden Hundley takes it, goes right out of bounds at the 30. Nice Not, pitch and catch. Nice job by the defense to come up and seal that as quickly as possible. But Huntley just kind of floated into open space, found a, a green piece of grass that nobody else had occupied, and it ends up moving the chains. Here's Holcomb. Sends a man in motion, Smith, and then they give it off to Linquist up the middle and down to about the 20. And the one thing you've been talking about all night is on that pass, Holcomb's back there, and he's got all day to survey the field and find a receiver. Here, a luxury that uh, Rutz has not had. Milwaukee looks over the sideline. Second and two now. At the 22, their opening drive of the second half, Smith in motion, fakes it to Smith, Holcomb will take it himself, cuts it inside, gets a block over there, now slips a tackle and down to the 15-yard line for a first down. Now it does look like we have a flag down at the 20, but we've talked about Holcomb not running a ton, but when he has, he's been really efficient. Holding Waukee. Waukee had four penalties in that first half. There was one called on Johnson, but then it it was uh, they waved it off. Well, that will be another thing Coach Carlson won't be happy with with the penalties here. But second and nine at the thirty. So again, costly penalty for Waukee as it brings up second down instead of a first. Hand off to Lindquist, and he's caught immediately as he heads into the hole and brought down by Cade Coonan. Wonky, again, just taking their time now here. Third and nine at the 29. Two receivers right, one left for Holcomb. Sends Smith across, fakes it to Smith. Pressure, he gets hammered as he lets go of it. And almost made the catch. Big defensive play down there by uh, Will Scott. But Holcomb took a hard shot on the blitz. Well, and honestly, big defensive play on both sides as it seemed like the receiver, as much as he was trying to get down there and come up with the uh, touchdown reception, it was Huntley also trying to get to the back of the end zone and make sure as that was thrown into double coverage that that didn't get picked off. They're setting up for a... I'm going to send somebody out here. Kunin is going to go out. And Bartacek's going to set up for a 47-yard field goal. His longest has been 34 on the season. 
Snap is there. Kick is up. Good! Wow. Didn't have a lot of height, but it had the distance. 47 yards. Makes it 31 to 10. Let's take a break here on CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Barnachek will kick it off after hitting that field goal and extending the lead to 21. Back deep is Tubbs, Kriegel, and Cresta. And this one is going to go into the end zone again. Bartacek's been hitting those touchbacks regardless, and now after hitting a 47-yard field goal, you just had to imagine that he's, he's his got confidence. a lot of adrenaline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got, he still has a you know, little bit of a breeze behind him there. As we've seen, sometimes the punt's going back the other way, north to south to hold up a little bit. But big drive now for Johnston. They are looking to get something started here. 8.40 to go in the third quarter. And caught, it is caught out there. To Caleb Helgus, and I think was a cat, made the catch. Yep. So a pickup of six. And is that the first completion to somebody other than Moore? That is correct. It's a second and four for Johnston. Preston Hobie to the right here. Straight back. Throw it out and almost Ooh. picked off again. Mukhtar over there. Great read on that. Nearly had it picked off. Bill Mukhtar, so brings up a third down and four. Aaron Smith picked one off and took it back 25 yards for a touchdown in the first half. I bring Helgeson out to the right side this time. Two receivers left. Low snap, picks it up, ruts, throws it deep, looking for the tight end, he makes the catch! Down to the 30. Way to come back on the ball, Tyler Moore. It's going to be a 45-yard catch and run, and most of it being the catch. But then again, Moore fighting for every yard. And he's one of those guys where it's tough enough to cover him, but then imagine once he's got the ball in his hands, you've got to figure out a way to try to bring down 82. And he was able to body off the defender a little bit too. Here's Rutz, and there's everybody's moving. It's going to be motion penalty. I think, if I'm correct, that's the first accepted penalty for Johnston tonight. Well, he's had five. And first and 10 at the 34. Or first and 15, it, I should say, with the uh, walk-off. They send Moore in motion, send him out wide. Now he comes back in. Moore gets it on a pitch back, and now Moore will come in to round. He'll throw it, and it's caught by Cresta. So they hand it off, pitch back to Moore, and Moore throws a pass down to Cresta. 
It's a little razzle-dazzle by Johnston. And they're down at first and goal at the six. Well, Tyler Moore with that last reception goes over the century mark, 108 yards on eight receptions. And then they say, let's find something else for him to do when he strikes for 28 yards. Crested to the right, Helgeson wide to the left. Two backs in the backfield. Moore goes in motion. They send him to the end zone. They're going to lob it up there. Touchdown. Johnston, six yards out to Moore. And with Rutz rolling out there to his left, all he did is just arc that one up and over everybody. And that was one of those where when Moore turns around, that one just falls right into his lap. And credit Moore, he kept going to that space. And here's the extra point kick. Up and good. Johnston hanging on. 31-17 here. Back after this on CISN.TV. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Here at Waukee, some scoring in the third quarter, and the touchdown pass by Johnston cuts the lead down to 14. <coughs> and the first time we've seen a, a little bit of life, a little bit of variety to in that offense, going to a few other receivers, but then coming back to the big man more, the tight end, Eric. Yeah, and uh, with more, he, he's a threat for a variety of reasons. I mean, he, he runs routes fantastically. If you can quick get it to him, he can bowl over some people. Oh, and he's also 6'5", so he's going to be able to come down with those jump balls as well. Here's the kick. Coming up short at the 16-yard line, taken by Lindquist, and there's a flag down, and this will be coming back. Flag down at the 26. Lindquist had a good return, but it'll be coming back holding Waukee so they'll march it back to the 16 now the Johnston defense let's see if they can come up here with a stop you can see them, the offense of Waukee. Hand off to Smith. Smith touches it outside. 20, back into the 25, and he couldn't get the corner that time, but he got about nine. That was running right where he went 89 yards in the first half, and here they stopped him 80 short of that. Still a nine-yard pickup on first down in bad. And Smith now just a yard away from picking up 100 on the ground through just three rushes and add to that three receptions for 71 yards. Handoff up the middle, slips a tackle. And Lindquist, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. If even that. Yeah. Well, I think they're going to mark him right there, but he was, well, now I'm looking to maybe lose a yard, but he was about ready to lose five. They bring... Brandon Menz back in there. Brings up third and two for Waukee. At the 24. Holcomb comes up. Everybody looks to the sideline. They're going to check the play here. And off Lindquist. He scoots ahead and finds a hole and gets the first down. Six 
Just a good piece of running there. He shuffled his feet a little bit, waited for a little daylight, and then stuck his nose up in there and got the first down. And that's not going to seem like a big play, but believe me, when you're Johnson, you're itching to get the ball back. Yeah. If they could have held him to three and out, that would have been huge and also would have really helped out in great field position for the Dragons. Get, get four more downs, and the clock's rolling again here for Waukee. There's a handoff again. Up the middle, a delayed handoff, a little misdirection there, and Lindquist is knee down at the 35, but a pickup of six on first down. And for Waukee, it's at least four more downs, but Linquist rips off some more eight yarders like that. You could be seeing that this could be a, an extended drive. Well, yeah, you could rip up that under five minutes now here in the third quarter. Linquist back there, two receivers left. And they hand it off to him. He gets hit just into the hole, picks up a yard, and so it'll be about third and one. Thompson, Matt Thompson on the tackle there for Johnston. Third and one for Waukee. <laughs> Feeling they send Mukhtar down the line. They're going to follow him right over that left side. Lindquist and gets ahead of steam, and he's up to the 45-yard line. First down, Waukee. Clock will stop at 4.02, but they'll start rolling it as soon as they get it set. And Lindquist has reached the century mark. He's now at 114 yards on 20 carries. See that in the slot left. He gets a lead block there for Lindquist. Lindquist struggles through and dives over the 50 into Johnston territory at the 49. And Lindquist can make the most out of nothing. It seems like they've cut off everything. They give him a sliver, and he's got a big body, but he doesn't worry about trying to slide it through. He just plows through and then wears a couple of Johnson players as he falls forward for a few more yards. Aaron Smith back in the ball game now. He'll take that inside slot receiver spot there to the right. But they give it to Lindquist. He cuts to the right, and there's a flag down. Lindquist on the carry. Penalty flag on play. And we'll see what this is. Might be holding again, I believe. Yep, holding Waukee. That is one, two, three, four holding calls on Waukee tonight. And that'll move it back. Bring up a second and 14. And what that means is somewhere there's probably four clumps of coach's hair sitting on the <laughs> sidelines. Yeah. You feel a little better that you got the 14-point lead there, but you still don't like to see that on a good play. Hand off to Lindquist again. He cuts through, ducks under, and gets across the 45 up to the 47. And they got to get all the way down to the 45 of Johnston for the first down, so... It'll bring up third and about nine, or a long eight. And what was really impressive there was Linquist was actually losing his balance, yet stayed on his feet, and then realized he was going down, but just made sure to straighten out and fall forward. That was one of those where most players, if they lose their balance there, they're falling down, and that's a negative play. Dale Stout in there along with Smith. They're lined up on the left side. Sadat Jr. in the slot on the right. Linquist in the backfield. They send Smith in motion. Hand it off to Smith. He's going to look to try to turn the corner. He'll get over there. Cross 50. 45, 40, 30, 25, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Aaron Smith, number four. 53 yards. And the most impressive part about that was as he got to midfield there, he had almost no room to work with. Just walked the tightrope and was able to not only keep his balance, but keep a full head of steam. And from there, I mean, the Johnson players were trying to cut him off at an angle, but good luck catching up to number five. Well, the extra point coming from Bartacek. Mm -hmm. 
up and good. That makes it 38 to 17. Waukee over Johnston here. Back with the kickoff after this on CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. Back here at Waukee, Aaron Smith for the second week in the row has put four scores on the board. A reception, two runs, and a return interception for the four touchdowns, and it's 38-17. Waukee, this one just gets into the end zone. Thought it might be heading left in a penalty there, but it goes out in the end zone, so It'll be a touchback, and Johnston will take over first and 10 at the 20 with 149 to go in the third. And that was a pound and pound with Lindquist, pound away, and then all of a sudden you get Smith back in there and turn on the speed. And that just shows what those two guys do differently. Lindquist's game is, I'm going to hit you. Smith's game is, I dare you to touch me. Rutz hands it off. Aiden Moore in there. He gets a yard. Saw Moore at the start of the game. We haven't seen him much since then. Yeah, Moore started off with a six yard run. Then a couple of uh, negative plays and hasn't been able to do much since then. All uh, told, more with uh, three yards on five carries. Pressure coming again. Rutz rolls left, throws it out short. And was looking for Caleb Helgeson out there. Gutierrez with the pressure that time up the middle. One thing you see, Waukee, they're rotating those linemen in there. Braden Menz, who plays tight end on offense, he's coming in and out. They're giving those linemen some fresh legs, give them a little breather, and then they come back in, and they've just been pitting their ears back, Eric, and going after Rutz every time. And Rutz has been streaky. Started out four of five, and then before that incompletion, had connected on five of his last six. Well, I'd be streaky, too, if I kept seeing those great jerseys coming at me. <laughs> Drops back. Now he's got some time. Throws late. Picked off at the 30. Down to the 15, 12. And Joe Morrison with the pick off at the 30. Morrison comes up with a play, reads it beautifully, gets the interception, then gets a great return and could have been satisfied with that, but then the exclamation point on top was the shoulder and the contact as he was brought down. His second interception of the season for Morrison, the senior. And here's Holcomb back out. Reverse flip to Smith, and there's a flag down. There's going to be probably illegal formation. And the way Wonky's offense has been going, it'll just back it up 10 yards, and then they'll just pick up <laughs> yeah. some more yardage out of it. That is one thing that I've been impressed with them. They get those penalties. A lot of times those kill a drive, but so far tonight they haven't uh, killed the drives for Wonky. They've been able to recover from that. And Eric, just the way the whole game started with, you know, the bad snaps, a block punt, and Johnson scores right away, but Waukee just came right back at it. And procedure penalty. Yeah, good teams can just go out there and lead from start to finish. Great teams are the ones that can go through those rough spots and then build off of them as a team. 
So Holcomb sets it up. First and 15 at the 18. Handoff up the middle. Falling ahead. Lindquist. Helgeson on the tackle. And this could be the last play of the third quarter. If they decide to snap it or not, there's a 12-second difference between play clock and game clock, as you see it there on the screen winding down. And looks like they're going to let it go down and go to the fourth quarter here. Wonky driving again up 38-17 after three. Back with the fourth quarter after this on CSN.TV. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 tracks or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Obsessively, relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile, regardless of the times. Here at Waukee High School, 38-17 will the Warriors will have it second and ten at the 14 after shifting sides of the field. Urbandale was leading Fort Dodge 21 to 10. Waukee will play Urbandale in the final game of the season, and Ankeny was leading Valley 21 to three. That's a halftime. I don't have an updated on that, but uh, Waukee will go to Valley next. Friday night, a week from tonight, and then finish the season with Urbandale. And uh, still a couple of bruising games for them to finish out. If they can finish out this one, though, they'll move to 3-2 and two on the season. Eric can feel a little bit better about it as they head to the last two games. You've got to feel ecstatic if you're Waukee and you can get through the five opponents that they've had uh, through to start their season and be north of 500. And really the losses, we talked about it again. Southeast Polk scored a touchdown late. Dowling came back on him and beat him by three. And now second 10 at the 14 for Jacob Holcomb. He rolls, looks, throws to the corner. Caught touchdown. That's Dale Stout, isn't it? Dale Stout on the catch. And what was most impressive about that was Holcomb was either hit as he released it or just after, but he just put that in a spot, floated it up there, and gave his receiver an opportunity to come down with it. Nice footwork as well there at the corner. Bar to check for the PAT. It's up and good. He stays perfect on the season for the ones he's been able to get off, and it's 45 to 17. So, let's see, one. That is also more. the second time that Waukee has scored in the first 10 seconds of a quarter. And that's what, the eighth touchdown pass for Holcomb on the season, I believe. So, 45-point explosion here by Waukee. And that's all come in quarters two, three, and four as they were held off the score sheet in through the, the first, first 12 quarter, minutes. Yeah, but four straight scores in the second quarter. Uh, three touchdowns and a field goal. Or no, four touchdowns, excuse me. 
The field goal didn't come till the third quarter. And four touchdowns tonight by Aaron Smith. As Bartacek gets ready to kick it off. Let's see how he does kicking into the wind this time. And he's going to do that little looper kick. And it's caught and taken out of bounds by Johnston Mason Cornwell. So they'll start out with not bad field position. Yeah, we've sung Cornwell's praises a couple of times, and I like the idea there is he catches it, immediately then looks to get out of bounds, so that way wasn't sure if he felt that he had a solid gr grasp on it, but if he fumbles it out of bounds, it's not a problem. And then he also just qu wants to quick get out of bounds and avoid maybe a big hit and possibly coughing up that ball. This is the best starting field position Johnston has had in a while. It's all been back at the 20 here. And here's Rutz. Throws out wide quick, and it's just hammered. Helgeson goes down for a loss of four. As they were trying to shake it up a little bit and get it out, spread it out a little bit, but Waukee defenders are just zeroed in, and they're coming full steam. Helgeson with his second reception of the game, although it takes away half of the yards that he had <laughs> going into that with uh, now two catches for three yards. And you almost say, well, let's try a screen against that front line, but the uh, secondary is so good, too, for Waukee, and they're closing that that's even not easy to do. Rutz drops back, looks. He's rolling under pressure. He'll be sacked at the 30. Morris Kona with the sack. The junior there. That is the third time Rutz has been sacked in the game. This one not as costly as the other two where they, they lost 10. But two back-to-back -back plays where you're going the wrong way brings up third and 18. At the 30, and there's a flag down. I think too many Warriors on the field. So that may cut down. The yardage here for Waukee, or for, excuse me, Johnston. It will by five. Well, that is one, two, three, four, five, nine penalties on the night for Waukee. Ankeny over Valley, 28-3 with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. And that's thrown out, caught at the 40 to Moore. But that'll bring up a fourth down. And we'll see if they... They're going to punt, but Rutz is going to go out. And bring in a different putter. And man, a good high booming kick. Fair caught. And that was Nick Nyron, the kicker, who punted that one. And a beautiful punt. Got a lot of hang time. And fifty yarder. Good punt, but also a good decision on the return. When you're up 45-17 with nine and a half to play at that point, you don't need yardage. You yeah. just need to not make mistakes. Yeah, don't make a mistake deep in your own end and, and give them the ball back because now you can go to putting the ball in the belly of uh, Lindquist and eat up the clock as they do here. And he dives right in. And Spikesman with the Spikesman, carry. Yep. And again, it's not going to be any sort of sexy play, but two yards, chew up some of that clock, because right now Johnson isn't just taking on Waukee. They're taking on that scoreboard clock as well. Man. 
Hand off to Spikes, but again, this time he's looking over the left side and cuts through there. They can get rid of these uniforms as far as I'm concerned. Once it gets into the uh, just the uh, lights on the field, they're so hard to see those uh, numbers on those gray backgrounds. And I've been petitioning for years. They should give the play-by-play -play and color guys more say in the uh, designs, but for some reason they're more concerned with what the kids like. <laughs> yeah. Well, Johnson, you got those numbers on the white. Now here's Slot, Sadan. He goes in motion. There's a jump on the outside. Two guys in motion. There's another penalty for Waukee. Well, despite the fact that they're up 45-17, Waukee uh, is going to have plenty to talk about uh, come Monday as uh, there are definitely some areas of the game uh, that the Warriors would like to clean up. Third and 12 now. Hand off. And he's pulled down immediately by Coonan. Spikes in the. Kate Kennan, rather, on the tackle. And that'll bring up a fourth down. The clock's still rolling, though, which is what. Waukee wants up 45 to 17. So for Johnson, that 50 yard punt really comes back uh, into play as they were able to flip uh, field position, then hold. Now they're going to be uh, looking to get the ball back in excellent uh, spot for the Dragons. And now Johnson's going to get a penalty as. Helgeson was out there back with Cresta to receive the punt, and then he tried to sneak off the field, <laughs> and they threw the flag, an illegal substitution. They had 12 guys out there. He tried to get off late, but unable to. And just a second penalty on Johnston. And... Well, for Aaron Smith, if you want to put together a highlight reel, you got enough stuff to go with <laughs> two games left in the season. Four touchdowns last week against uh, Dowling, four this week here against Johnston. And he does it in a variety of ways. I mean, he is a receiver that you can kind of go with a short pass, maybe a wheel router in the flat, and then watch him take off. But he's also a true receiver and can fight for some of those balls downfield as well. And the one came as a defender on an interception. Mm -hmm. So Helgeson now back in there, and Cresta also back to receive the punt. They get it away. Helgeson will come up and then now move away as it bounces at the 45. Takes a good walk. He bounces. It's going to roll. Another 13 yards. There's a flag down. Here, let's see what this is. Holding on Johnston. Because Johnston had just one penalty, but now they've got a couple here at a time when they really don't need to give up any yardage. And going to end up being a happy homecoming for Waukee, although a little untraditional as everything is now. So are they going to... they call that on Waukee? Oh, well, I guess they did. They called it on Waukee, so they're going to take it back. Yeah, it must have been, the as there's no way the, other way the Warriors would have wanted to re-kick that again. Centennial leading Ames 21-17 with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Thanks to Mark Amadeo feeding us some scores here tonight. So that'll be a re-kick, and that'll go as another Waukee penalty. They're up around a dozen now. 
Again. Calling for the fair catch, and then he's hit, and there's the flag on that as Cresta called for the fair catch. Kind of came up and then ran into the guy coming down. Yeah, and it wasn't a, a huge hit, no. but that's still an area where you basically got to treat that receiver as vulnerable once they make that. They're not expecting any sort of contact. So while it certainly wasn't uh, him coming across and hitting him as hard as he could, that's still going to be an easy flag for the officials to throw. But in a little bit of the defense of the, f uh, the guy coming down, he waited and then he ran up and lunged at that ball. Right, there were no but, arms out. Yeah, it was but you still a, got a kind shoulder of, bump. You still got to kind of hit the brakes there when you see that signal. So it would be a big penalty, though, for Johnson as it takes it down to the 29. I, I think what the wonky player was trying to do was slam on the brakes. Instead, as soon as he saw that fair catch, yeah. he should have just changed his trajectory and ran past him instead of trying to slow up. First and 10 at the 29. Handoff and stacked up. And that was Michael Foldis, the running back. On you, Dave. He's still leading Valley 28 to 10. Yep. That's who uh, Waukee will go to Valley Friday. And then they're back home against Johnston in two weeks. Valley, of course, with their quarterback declared ineligible. There's one over the head. As they got a new quarterback in there is Sam Hesselman. 6'1", 170-pound sophomore. So we might be hearing from Sam down the road here. With well, Rutz is just a junior. As for Johnson, they don't have another home game on the schedule. They'll travel to Ankeny and then finish the season against the uh, Southeast Polk Rams. Oh, there's a couple tough ones. <laughs> Ankeny winning tonight. As if either of these teams have well, played yeah, any easy yeah, wins. None of these, yeah, Waukee and Johnson both had, you know, and there's up the middle. Of course, they... They beat Dowling, but Dowling has kind of righted the ship now. Got things back going. Let's put it this way. There's a reason that these teams are just 2-2 two and two and 3-1, and one, yet ranked 7th and 5th because the uh, those voting took a look at who they've played, and, and some of those losses have been some pretty uh, close games against some stiff competition. Well, and the way they, you know, it stacked up last year, the last, what was it, Five games were continuous clock here. They did it with Waukee in those games. They weren't really contests, but with the condensed schedule and things the way they are this year, you're seeing the best teams go head-to-head. -head. And it's trying to scramble, and there's going to be a sack. On fourth down, Waukee will take over on downs. Got a feeling we're going to see a whole lot of new numbers out there for Waukee, too, when they come out. And that's a combination of a early a coverage sack, but then really, at that point, Hesselman brought it down and was just looking to try to find some daylight. Couldn't as the pocket collapsed around him. The officials are going to take a timeout here. I think that's one of those safety timeouts. Let's, do you want to keep it here? Yeah, we'll keep it here. See Dave down there getting a little view of the stands. And happy fans on the Waukee side of it here tonight. Is uh, Johnston early blocked the punt, recovered it at the 10. It was one play, ruts to Tyler Moore. And 4.51 to go. They were up 7-0. Then Waukee proceeded to roll off four straight scores. Holcomb to Smith, 49 yards. Smith... 89-yard run, Lindquist a 22-yard run, and then um, a pick six by Smith from 25 yards out. They had uh, a bad snap on the PAT they missed, but then they got a two-point conversion to make it up, and it was 28-7. to 
Johnson got a field goal then in the second quarter, 2.34 to go. They got an onside kick recovery, but they weren't able to punch it in. A long field goal, 45-yarder, went just wide. And then Waukee came out on the first, uh, in the third quarter, they got a field goal, 47-yarder by Bartacek. Extend the lead. Johnston came back with a uh, pass to Wood from six yards out, made it 31-17. But Aaron Smith then rumbled in again from 53 yards out over that right side. And then uh, it was... uh, Who was that last pass to Holcomb to... uh, I think Helgeson was the last one I had for Waukee Holcomb to uh, no Dale Dale uh, Stout Stout. I sometimes can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> Dale Stout. There we go. That was uh, Carson Rankin on the carry. And they're just going to take their time. Come up to the line with about 11 seconds to go on the play clock, raking the quarterback. And he'll keep it himself. <laughs> and, and right at the line of scrimmage. Flag yeah. down. Yep. And there will be. Holding again on Waukee. And I count that's like 14 penalties. Penalty against I think about five of those are holding penalties here on Waukee tonight. We're assist by the reserves in sometimes. A little miscommunication there. You haven't played a lot. and Now they just wait to get the play. And then there goes the flag again. And I think they're they lined up get, off sides. Yeah, I think they're. Uh, <laughs> That's but, one where let them snap. <laughs> the receiver lined up. And usually that receiver checks with the official. But mm-hmm. only call them off sides there. Second and 22. Most important thing is the clock, clock keeps, keeps running. running. Yeah, we're at that, uh, was it 35 point mark? And handoff. Anybody stop? Brock Barkus, the junior running back into the game, gets a carry. like um, Tristan Taylor just came in on the line. Third and 23 for the Warriors. Third and 23. Kandahov. No, he's going to keep it right up the middle. Got some good yardage there. Rankin. But it'll be fourth down. Still a nice nine-yard carry for the uh, quarterback. Now they'll send the punt team out. And clock still rolling. Cresta back deep. One of them back deep there to receive. And Helgerson back, too. And another penalty, a legal procedure. <laughs> well, coaches don't like that, too, when you come into the game and, you you know, you get a chance to play and you commit penalties. They won't like that. 
What makes it fourth and 19, which is a little academic at this point. Snap is high, but he comes down with it, and he'll run. Gonna get, won't get to the corner, and it'll go over on downs to Johnston. And we go back to an area that Waukee's going to want to address this next week, and that is the long snapping. snapping on the special well, teams. Snapping on any kind, too. Yeah. They had one uh, snap out of the uh, shotgun down there that turned yeah. it over to Johnston. So and that was a ended up being what could have been a, a vital play for Johnston. Uh, Waukee did a nice job of holding them to just a field goal attempt there to end the half. So here comes Johnston. Hand off up the middle. Good run there by uh, Michael Foldis. And I'm not sure if that was just a bug floating by or I'd just gotten so used to it. For, for a second, I thought I saw some yellow laundry go flying. <laughs> Fortunately, that was just my mind playing tricks on me. Well, that's we've had two plays now without a uh, better knock on so wood here. Yeah. <laughs> so... Here we go. Clock rolling. Foldis will get the handoff again. He's going to push forward and get the first down. And that will momentarily stop the clock. And I know that the decision's already uh, been come to. But here, if you're Johnson, you got three timeouts. You'd like to put together a drive, put up some points, and have some momentum for your squad going into next week's matchup. Yeah, I think they're just going to hand it off and get out of here. <laughs> They're on the road. Just Ankeny next week, did you say, or is it? I believe it's Ankeny and then Southeast Polk. Southeast That's Polk. right. And Waukee will travel to Valley, who is losing. Tackled by the majority of the Waukee defense. <laughs> Probably one more play here. And this one will go in the books. Both teams will end up coming out of this at three and two. Look to throw, knocked away. And it'll stay with Johnston. So they'll roll the clock and that will do it. Waukee's going to come out of here with a 45-17 win on homecoming here. And an entertaining, interesting evening of football here at Waukee. Oh, we'll take a break, come back, and wrap it all up here on CISN.TV. Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. We support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades. All to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not yours. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 
15 percent off 2020 equinox and 2020 tracks or zero percent for 84 months 15 percent off 2020 sonic and 2020 spark walkiechevy.com 12 percent off 2020 place 10 percent off 2020 colorado up to fifteen thousand dollars off new 2020 suburban we're in a position to give you more for your trade as always we're a partner you can count on schottenkirk chevy walkie walkiechevy.com Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. Here at Waukee, the final, you see there, 45-17. Didn't start out that way good for Waukee as uh, Johnson blocked the punt with 4.51 to go in the first quarter. And then it was Rutz went quickly. One play to Tyler Moore, 10 yards, and it was the PAT good. It was 7-0 Johnston. Then uh, Waukee came back in the second quarter, 11.51 to go, Holcomb. To Smith, 49-yard touchdown pass. A bad snap, and it was 7-6. Johnston over Waukee. 9.54 to go in the second quarter. The handoff to Smith. He goes right. 89 yards for the touchdown, and it was 13-7. Johnston after the PAT. Then it was 6.07 to go in the second. Lindquist, a 22-yard run. They went to Eddie Sadat Jr. for the two-point conversion, made it 21-7, Waukee. Then 5.29 to go in the second. Aaron Smith picks off Rutz at the 25 and takes it in. The PAT is good. It's 28-7. to seven. Uh, Then toward the end of the uh, first half, 2.34 to go. Nygren gets a 33-yard field goal. They kick it onside and recover it. But unable, they miss a 47 yard or 45 yard field goal as time expires at the end of the first half. And it was 28 10, Waukee at the half. And the third, uh, Bartacek got a 47 yard field goal with 8.40 to go in the third quarter, made it 31 to 10. Johnson came back with a uh, Rutz pass again to Moore from six yards out. PAT was good, and it was 31-17. Looked like, okay, Johnson got a chance to come back here, but then they hand it off to Aaron Smith again. He goes over the right side, turns on the burners, and it's goodbye, 38-17 with the PAT. Then Holcomb to Dale Stout from 14 yards out in the fourth quarter, only scoring in the fourth quarter, 11.54 to go, and it was 45-17. Eric Zamora, a few more of the numbers you see out of this game. What stood out for you? Well, the Waukee Warriors outgaining Johnson in all facets of the game uh, for the contest. Again, Holcomb not a quarterback that they're going to ask to go back and pass a ton, but he was efficient. 10 of 13 for 171 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and a two-point conversion. And um, the, the most part about it was that Holcomb was able to stay upright not a ton of pressure he was able uh, to really find some spots there so for the game they had 171 yards through the air and 204 on the ground uh, led by Aaron Smith with 152 yards on just four carries but Lindquist also helping out as well 131 he was the bell cow as uh, he had 23 uh, touches on the ground and through the air Smith with three catches for 71 uh, yards, and both he and Stout having a receiving touchdown. On the other side, uh, Johnson just able uh, to get 113 yards in the passing game, and part of that was as many times as they lost yardages in sacks. Sacked five times were their quarterbacks, and then 40 yards on the ground. They were led by uh, Blake Tubbs with uh, eight carries, but for only 13 yards as far as he was the one who ran it the most. Uh, Fold has actually had the most yards on the ground with 18, and uh, Rutz just flustered and uh, pressured all day. He uh, finishes uh, 13, excuse me, 12 of uh, 26 for 151 yards, a couple of touchdowns, 
a couple of interceptions, and Tyler Moore leading the way with 10 catches for 120 and two scores. So both teams are now 3-2 and two on the season. Waukee goes to Valley, which is losing to Centennial, or not, no, to Ankeny tonight. And then um, uh, Johnston goes to Ankeny, right? That is correct. Uh, so a couple um, more tough games coming up for both these teams. At Waukee, got to feel they got some momentum going in here to uh, game number six on the season of the final two here. Well, that's going to wrap it up here tonight. Thanks again to Randy, Ruman, and Dave working the cameras and the controls here tonight. Uh, for Eric Zamora, I'm Darty Angelson on CISN.TV.